Hello, evening everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Booze up here at Claret and Booze. Tonight, we're as long side of myself, we've got the usual uh, retrobate of Gary. How you doing, Gal? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, Nick's running a little bit late. He's probably got a problem with his new doggy, um, little puppy's bought, so he's probably got a few issues there, but he'll be on very shortly, so don't worry. And we've also got the return of a legend, somebody who... And his first appearance, uh, everyone was absolutely delighted with him being on the show. And they couldn't believe his knowledge of everything West Ham. And uh, we hope that he's going to beat Nigel in the quiz tonight. How are you doing, Dave? You all right? I'm good, mate. Yeah, I wouldn't bank on that. I, I think my uh, my knowledge is not as good as your, your lot, actually. But it's good to be back. And thank you for inviting me. No, not at all, mate. Not at all. And the other guest we've got is Nigel. Uh, moving on. Uh, sorry, I'm joking, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Nigel. How you doing, mate? You right? I was expecting a big build-up there, like you gave Dave. Yeah, but you're regular as clock. Well, you're part of the furniture, aren't you? Oh, you know what mate, I mean? it's like that, you I'm know. like the shit on your show and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but how you been, Nigel? Right, mate? Yeah, yeah. Just been um, researching some... Fantastic Eintracht Frankfurt stuff in conjunction with Eintracht Frankfurt's official historian, who um, oh. who I'm hoping to meet at the game, and yeah. um, I'll reveal a bit all later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're gonna, yeah. We're gonna, I mean, tonight tonight's show is very uh, Europe sent uh, Europe heavy. You know, um, we're concentrating a lot on Europe, uh, talking about some of the some of the guests or one of the guest trips thus far over to Leon and Seville, um, and we're going to be talking about. You know the, the Europa League going forward. Uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit, a bit, bit of news, and you know Gary's going to go into a little bit of detail. But um, a bit of news that we're going to discuss is obviously the debt contract issue. That is, um, well, I heard it first on Nigel's esteemed podcast on Tuesday night. Oh, sorry, I listened to it on Wednesday, but it seems to have read this ugly head forty-eight hours later. So I'm not sure. Why or how? But I think I think someone's listened to the podcast late and thought, better get yeah. it out there. It's big news. Yeah. It was <laughs> funny. I'll tell you all now, because the person that revealed that news revealed it because he thought it was common knowledge. Oh wow! Really? <laughs> and then he realised, oh shit, it weren't common knowledge. So there you go. We broke exclusive news on more than just a podcast that really we shouldn't have broke. Are you, so yeah. just just to clarify for those of us that are not sure, <laughs> is this that he's staying for an extra year? Is that the news? Well, the the, the news was that they they offered him a, a, a two hundred thousand pound a week contract. Um, it obviously meant he'd sign up and stay at the club for a longer period. But then again, we all know players can sign a contract one week, yeah. Yossi Benayoun, and then join another yeah. football club the next week. <laughs> so contracts mean anything, but we'd like to think better of Declan. But apparently what they have struck is a gentleman's agreement that he would stay for one more season. And uh, um, I don't know if there's a proviso on that about European football, but at the end of the, the next season, if there's no... You know, if there's no progression, so and if you look at progression from where we are now, that means you know challenging top four and Champions yeah. League football. If that's not on the horizon, the thing about Declan is what it seems to come out is he wants to win things, and yeah. and he's one of them players. Where as a West Ham fan, you got your old your hand up and go, you deserve to win things, yeah. mate. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But I have so, no problem with this, Nigel. No. When I heard it the other night, I have no problem with this at all. He said no. to the club, um, you know, I'm not signing a new contract. 200 grand a week, thank you very much, but I'm not interested in your money. You can yeah. offer me 300 grand a week. I turn it down. Don't matter. Um, he said, I want to win trophies. If he can win trophies with West Ham, he might consider signing a new contract, but he's going to stay until next summer. If we win nothing before then, then he's off. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, does that, does that, then, does that then mean that we could say that he's being... Um, he's got a set of morals where he's not just taking the money, or is there more yeah. behind it? I don't know. It's a strange one, isn't it? Like you could say that he he could take the money and run, if you know, not run, but he could take the money today and be on two hundred grand a week. Um, so to look at it negatively, I think possibly I don't know how you look at it really. I'm not sure how I, how I see it. At all. Well, it's it's a weird. Uh, he's, I mean, with these contract things, you know, there's a lot of supposition that goes on. Yeah. So the the, the, the perceived line is he's got two years left on his deal 
Yeah. Now, we know West Ham love an option, i.e. there's always a deal where it's plus an option. You know, we've just enforced a two-year option on Ben Johnson and there was nothing he could do to stop it. Mm. So, mm. Um, and 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 that was weren't really with a pay rise either because Ben Johnson yeah. turned down the contract that West Ham offered him. But I suppose they see it as, well, that gives us another year to negotiate with him to sign a new contract. And if he don't, then we'd have to sell him. Does deck value drop? Because if he does stay for another season, then technically he's only got one year left on his contract. Who knows? That, yeah, that's my that's my concern because uh, there is that year option. That's not that's a unilateral option, isn't it? West Ham could take that option without. They could just they could just yeah agree. It. The, the, normally, the, the the way West Ham try and get it. I mean, you got yeah. to remember this contract would have been signed in twenty twenty. 2019 yeah. um this he, he would have started on was so you get an apprentice contract to you 17 you sign your first pro contract at 17 i think he broke into the first team at 18 yeah so then he got given a contract then he got given a better one and the better one which people i don't know if people remember um at the time it was that they gave him a five grand pay rise every 15 games he paid Mm. Right. Mm. So he's every fifteen games he plays, he's still getting a pay rise. Yeah. But you know, it that probably puts him on seventy grand, eighty grand. You know, by still nowhere near is standing in the team as the player mm. that he is, and against yeah. the top paid players of Ariola and Yarmolenko. Mm. Um. But you know, let's face it. I think the highest paid player we've had was Chikorito in the club's history. And we've just offered Declan, you know, 55, 60 grand more than we were paying him. I, yeah. I think, like, I mean, we're, we're going to talk about this a bit more in depth yeah. when we go on to the news. Because I know Nick, Nick will want to have an input on this one, as we all know, which is fine. The only thing I'd say is when people say that his value will diminish, you know, if he don't sign the contract and another year goes by. To be honest with you, I think the value is irrelevant because I think he's, he's irreplaceable anyway. So genuinely... To me, I know it's not business. That's not how business works. But whether we get 120 or 150, or 100, I don't really, you know, you can't, you're not going to replace him. I don't think you're going to get, and, and the thing is, I still don't well, think whatever we get, this yeah. figure you get, you know, it could be that we'd settle, we'd get 70. I think what, even with one year left on his contract, it will still be our record transfer fee received. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. no, no matter. And also, you know, frankly, I couldn't care less about the business side of it. No. You know, though our chair, our chairman, and woman have sold us down the river. So you know, I couldn't give a stuff whether or not we get fifty million or hundred million. I'd rather have them for the extra year. Yeah. And then if we win the Europa League and then do well in the Champions League, he might stay long beyond that as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's and that's the thing. Why we're all sitting here going, "Oh, it might diminish and whatever." It, you know, I, I, there's a good ch chance. Of us, I still have the confidence that we can win this. I look at the other two teams, Leipzig okay. and Rangers, and um, I, I'm not. When you look at the caliber of teams that we've beat already, I think beating Seville actually showed us how good we were. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, and and um, and beating you know, Leon three 0 in their own. No, back. yeah, and then to do, you know, Leon have been a Champions League team recently. We, I think if you include Man City and Man United, I think this season we've beat five teams that have played Champions League football this yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good stat. Yeah, we're so, not making it easy for ourselves with all the injuries, though. You know, no. I mean, Diop is a disaster. I have to say. Yeah. Well, you don't need to worry about him. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you what, when we do the Frankfurt preview, when we do the Frankfurt pre preview later, I'm probably going to terrify you by showing the f you the formation that Frankfurt play. But anyway, mm. I'll, well, I'll leave, I've I'll been leave. terrified by seeing some of the goals they scored. <laughs> I mean, that, that Sal and um, is it Kostic? They Show oh yeah, thirty-five yards. I was like, oh, yeah, but yeah. that was again. That was against a stab against again. Barcelona team. I, I will yeah. cover all that in the preview. I'll cover all that in the preview. It's a very biased preview. I know. I know <laughs> that surprises you. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, as long as you don't waffle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would I, Nigel? Would no, I? I? We'll have him later. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's get on to. 
some fantastic information. Little bit of a, a, a guide to Seville and Leon from David. Now, David, you, you kindly sent me some um, holiday snaps of you <laughs> on your adventures in the Europa League, which I'm going to share whilst you're talking, so don't worry. Um, oh, I'm right. <laughs> but as, as you're the only one here who, who, who's been to any of the Euro Europa League away games, I thought it'd be nice to hear from you. And I know it's going back a few weeks, but I mean, you know, yeah. just give a little brief overview of, you know, let's start with Seville, really, you know. OK, well, I decided I was going to have an extended break because I hadn't been away since before COVID. So I actually went to Seville for a week. And best decision I've made, because it's a beautiful city, um, I got really nicely acclimatised before all the West Ham hooligans turned up. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, that's at Cadiz Beach, uh, where I took a I took a, a one day train trip down there, yeah. and yeah. it's beautiful down there. It was a really warm day, mind you. The sea was freezing this time of year, so I, I went plunging head first into the sea and froze my arse. <laughs> was that your was that was that your excuse when you walked back out and you shorts were tight? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <I'm> freezing <laughs> in now. That, the acorn. <laughs> now that is um, Maria Luisa Park which Lovely. is the most romantic park in Seville. And uh, when I was over there, I was posting all these photos on Facebook and all my mates were suddenly going, oh, I've been to Seville. It's a beautiful city. And my mm -hmm. mate went, yeah, I proposed to my wife in, in Seville. Suddenly everyone had been to bloody Seville. And then um, and then just before the uh, the game, I went I took a stroll up to the uh, stadium and it yeah. was it's really situated in a weird place. It's like just at the back of this shopping centre. And, uh, you know, I did the old photographs of me. I don't think I've sent you one of those, but I did the photographs of me. That's inside the stadium. Yeah. Uh, but I did some photos outside of the stadium, and it was really impressive. And there were loads of West Ham supporters there trying to get tickets. One kid told me that he just went straight to the box, of, box office, went straight to the, uh, yeah, ticket office, we call it, in, in football. <laughs> I'm thinking of the yeah, box office. So he went straight to the um, ticket office and got a ticket for 40 euros. No so way. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, 40 euros on the day. In, in, in the home end? Uh, no, he said he was, uh, well, he's sort of, you know, West Ham fans were scattered around. He oh, reckons right. there, there was, I mean, there was a section in the upper tier and actually a section in the lower tier where a lot of the West Ham fans were. But he reckons yeah. where he got his ticket, there was still West Ham fans there. Wow. Um, so it wasn't in the allocated away end, yeah, but a lot yeah, of yeah. our fans were sort of dotted around the stadium. Yeah. Now, I have not got a great head for heights. So <laughs> when, I, when I get these tickets, I never know where I'm sitting because I get them through, as I told you boys, a mate of mine's got a mate who works for UEFA. So I was sort of on one of the upper tiers and it's like a sheer drop, unlike the taxpayer stadium, which is, uh, you know, set way back and you you don't really yeah. get vertigo at Argaf. Yeah. Uh, this place was like really steep and it played havoc with my vertigo, I have to say. Uh, so I took my seat. It was obvious that we were mainly in the Seville end yeah. um, and we were warned, you know, not to celebrate if we score and all that. So I turned around and sitting next to me was a guy who turned out to be a Sun journalist. Um, so he recognised me and we got talking. So we watched the game and I thought we played brilliantly. You know, it was what yeah. I was, I, I really, I was surprised yeah. at how well we played, yeah. even though we lost 1-0. I thought we gave him a great game. I thought Lanzini was amazing. Antonio had a great game. We defended beautifully. Um you know, and so I was I was really hopeful for the return leg. And then this, uh, I don't drink alcohol. I go, it gave me up quite a few years ago. And then this, these two geezers sitting next to me said, do you want to go out for a drink? So I said, I'll just come out for a little bit. Four in the morning, we're still in the nightclub in the old town <laughs> of Hill. <laughs> Loads of West Ham supporters. What, and you're and you're yeah. stone cold sober. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But I'm I'm used to that. I've been sober yeah, yeah. for 19 years. Oh, okay. Um, but it doesn't stop me going out, you know. And no. It's, <laughs> and it's more fun. But every time I tried to leave, they physically stopped me from going. So I I was ready to go about two o'clock. You know, four a.m. They're still grabbing hold of me, and I managed to get away from them. <laughs> and then my my sat nav wouldn't work. So I had no idea. I was wandering around Seville, 4 a.m. in the morning, no <laughs> idea where I was, dying for a piss. 
So, uh, so I eventually, I eventually managed to get the sat nav working and made it back to my hotel. It was about an hour walk from where I was. Yeah. But unforgettable night. Yeah. I was absolutely yeah, buzzing, you know, the next morning. And then funnily enough, it had been beautiful all week. And then the day after the game, it absolutely pissed down with rain. Yeah. So, now, I mean, the, the scenes that everyone saw on Twitter and social media looked amazing, you know. And it, and, it, and it sort of, and like you said, I think the performance was brilliant and it made you, you know, it made you not only proud, but it made you, even though we was down, we, 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 the, the tie was very much still on, you know, and, yeah. you know, we all took, we all took, we all took. What, do you know what pleased me the most was the behaviour of the West Ham fans mm -hmm. was so respectful. You know, we were supporting our team. There were, there were tons of us. I'd guesstimate, I don't know, there must have been at least 10,000 over there. Yeah, maybe maybe even more than that. No, I think one of one of our one, one of one of our mates still he, he was out there and he said like the locals in Seville were asking West Ham fans about the songs they were singing, what they yeah. meant, and all that. So that's that's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? There was yeah. no they wasn't scared to approach the West Ham fans, which means they must have behaved, you know. Yeah, and the Spanish fans were really good natured, it was great. You know, before before the kickoff, they were singing all their songs as well. Yeah. Uh, which I've taken a video of, and I, you know, I really warmed to the place. I thought it was a beautiful city, great stadium. Then I heard that the Eintracht Frankfurt fans had attacked us, you know, the night before our game, and I was thinking, oh god, mm. you know, that's yeah. Not good. But that, that, that got reported fairly though, because yeah, um, initially you saw all the photos and you thought, oh, he's going off, but then the bar owner said. No, 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 no. It wasn't West Ham. The Frankfurt fans just came around the corner and started smashing up. He said, I love the West Ham fans. They've been brilliant. He said, they've bought loads of beer. I want them to come back. <laughs> so that wasn't that wasn't at all a market employee for any fine that we might get to. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that sounded fantastic, to be honest with you, mate. I mean, and then obviously we had the home leg, which we got through, and then we were drawn against Leon. Um, yeah. And you was out there as well. Yeah, so I did. I flew to Seville, and it was it was a great experience. I never had any trouble on the plane, yeah. but because I live right near Kings Cross Station, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give Eurostar a punt. Yeah. Uh, not a great decision because it was actually more expensive than the plane. The whole the whole thing cost me four hundred quid, uh, <laughs> and I was thinking. In fact, as I was sitting on the train, I was thinking, what the hell did I pay four hundred quid for? Um, but it was it was a bit of a nightmare. The queues, well, you know, to go through immigration were really, really long. And I had to get it really early in the morning. And then I got to Paris and um, I can speak a tiny bit of French. Uh, but I was struggling to work out where the RDR is. So you get off at the Gare de Nord and then you've got to get the uh, go to the Gare de Lyon station. And in yeah. order to do that, you've got to get the I think it was the RDRD it was called. Yeah. But it's this like labyrinth of a of a train station, and then I'm trying to negotiate the ticket machine, and you got to scroll down, and I'm trying to make myself understood by the uh, you know the French uh, train people who you know are not that helpful to be honest. But I got a ticket for one euro ninety, got on the RDR, and it <laughs> it was a far cry from Spain. It was like a bit more like London, you know, people just like glaring at you. <laughs> and then and then I got off at the Gare de Leon and then I had about an hour and a half wait and they're all so bloody rude to me, the um yeah, you know, the people the train workers. The French are not very friendly in Paris at all. Oh. Um but I eventually got on the train and that was fine. Yeah. Uh but it was just it seemed to be a journey that went on and on and on. And then just as I arrived in Leon, I won't say who it is, but one of the actors that I was due to be working with in this film rang me literally just as I got off the train and he went, I'm not doing this fucking film. I don't like the script. The director's a twat. So I said, mate, I've literally just got off the train. I said, can we have this conversation? Another time? He wouldn't get off the phone. He's renting his head off. And then, you know, I'm knackered from a seven hour journey and he's going, you know, I've dropped out. So they're going to offer you my part. You're probably... You know, take it. I won't say, I nearly said his name there. I said, Look, mate, <laughs> just calm down. I'll talk to you. So I put the phone down. Sure enough, the director then rings me, offers me this geezer's part just as I've arrived in Leon. So I said, I'm not going to do that. In fact, I'm pulling out the film. So that was not a good start. 
No, I, actually, I, I am. I turned my back on an acting <laughs> job while I was there. But, I mean, obviously, obviously, <laughs> as, the, as some of the images you sent me show, once you did arrive in Leon and got acclimatised. You started to Mate. enjoy yourself somewhat. So I had a couple of days uh, on my own, and then I met up with this. So that geezer standing right behind me, the young guy, is a yeah. bloke called Will. He was one of the people I met in Seville. The okay. bloke next to him is his dad, and the other yeah. two guys are his best mates. So I, but we went to a place called Funky Monkey, which yeah. is in uh, the Bella Cour part of Leon, and it was full of West Ham supporters. In fact, it was it they were they'd been there so long they literally had drunk the pub dry. They ran out of beer. <laughs> and then they started serving what all the guys said tasted like IPA and it was horrible. And yeah. they're all going and the barman's going, I can't believe it. We had enough beer for a week. And it's like, yeah, but you haven't you don't know what British football support was like. So at, they, least, at, yeah, but at, at least at least you could totally eradicate yourself from the uh, from the ones that yeah, were drinking dry. Yeah, I was drinking I mean? Diet Coke. So, then, the game, so the game itself inside the stadium? It was amazing. And again, it was even higher than Seville. So I got I got to my position and got the worst vertigo I've ever had. So I sort of staggered to my seat with the help of a steward. And then I sat there and then it was apparent to me I was completely surrounded. Yeah, that's the view. I was I mean, it's an amazing stadium. Absolutely okay. beautiful stadium. Um, and I've got to say, the Leon supporters were extraordinary. They made more noise than I've ever heard in any stadium, you know. Right. And they were they were doing those kind of hand claps, you know, and you know, doing lots of chants. And it, it was it was really a, an amazing atmosphere. And then and then we scored, yeah. and I was like, oh shit! And then I turned around, and it was evident that right behind me was a big line of West Ham supporters, where I was <laughs> sitting. I was sitting in the Leon. Bro, and so all the West Ham supporters gone like that without actually cheering. So it became obvious that we were all West Ham. Then the second goal went in, and the Leon supporters around us were really pissed off. And so I went out at, at the at the break, and uh, you know, loads of people came over to me and going, "Oh, hello, mate," and all that. You know, the old in between and stuff. And then uh, you know, and it was just a fantastic uh, time from then on. And then I sat with them. There was a spare seat. So I sat with all the West Ham fans in the second half. And then we scored a bloody third goal. And that yeah. Bowen goal was amazing. Um, yeah, Nigel, was... Nigel, that was your favourite goal tonight, the Bowen one, wasn't it? I remember you saying the other day. Yeah, yeah. That was, um, I just I just think that the breakout play, um, Antonio laid it back. Um, I feel, was, it, yeah. um, was it Ben Johnson then? So Antonio Four. controlled it, laid it back. Fornells played was it the ball. Fornells, yeah. And then yeah. played it into the path. Yeah. Or Bowen who, who, who run from deep, Martin Amazing. Peters esque arriving late, yeah, and yeah. Uh, collected the ball. I mean, it wasn't the sweetest of shots. He just the you know the, the the fact that he managed to get it into the corner. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to diminish the thing. You know, their keeper was a cold keeper, wasn't he? At the end yeah. of the day, yeah, we knew that. We did, but say it's, that, yeah. you know, I said at the time. I still stand by it. It's West Ham's finest night on the continent. They've never yeah, played yeah. that well in in Europe in a, in a competition. No. So. And I and I'll tell you what happened. I, after that third goal went in, Leon gave up. Yeah, it yeah. Was so obvious in their body language, they they just knew they were beaten. Yeah. And we, I thought we controlled the game from then on. Yeah, I, and it's funny because I think their season really hinged on the Europa League, and it's it's funny because. The same's happening with Frankfurt. Frankfurt are sitting ninth in the table. Tenth. I don't, is it tenth now? Yeah, because yeah. they got beat yeah. at the weekend. Yeah. You know they're not going to make. Um, I think the Bundesliga is it the top three get champ? Oh, they might get four in Champions League. The yeah. same couple in UA for running it. So it, I know they don't look like they're going to scrape. I mean, my team Cologne's gone above them. Um, I think we're sitting seventh now, just outside the European places. So. Um, you know, their season looks like they've thrown all their chips in on Europa League. Yeah. And um, yeah, but yeah, but like 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 David said, like Leon, I mean, I know it's 3 0, but I don't think they even in the first leg, in the second leg, they had a lot of the ball. But yeah. it, even even in the first leg, when we went down to 10 men, I know we've discussed this, but you know, Ariola didn't have much to do. No, you know, no. you know, and even in the second leg, they had a lot of the ball, but 
But no, we're better when what? other teams... Yeah. And, and if if you look, look, you know, we've beat Man United, Chelsea, Liverpool this season. Yeah. Yeah. You know, due nil nil against you know City in in the League Cup before knocking them out on penalties. And we played so well in those games, they yeah. all had more of the ball. We, we prefer teams to have more of the ball. And it's yeah. can we use our counter attacking? I know Antonio's not scoring, but he's old up player of the ball. He's brilliant. Uh, to yeah. be able to bring Bowen or four nails in, you know, is just as important to the yeah. to the yeah. way we play. Good. He was immense. He was immense in that game against yeah. Leon because he was occupying yeah. two defenders and he was freeing up space for everybody else. And his his actual hold up play, which I'm really critical of him sometimes for his hold up play, his hold up play that night was amazing. It was mm. really, really on point. I mean, I don't think he gave a ball away. But one second, there's a few uh, in between us style comments here uh, about your your journeys. So uh, you can first have of all, Gary night. Gary Smithers, Seville completed yeah. it, mate. <laughs> and then Gary comes back again and says, uh, train wankers. Come here, Jamie Wright, best fans in the world. Yes, we are. Yeah. And uh, what else? What else we got? Uh, that's oh, the French people were brilliant in Mets, Steve Sprague says. Oh, so, okay. Dave, you know, when you go football, you make new friends at football, yeah? Yeah. I mean, you know, football, football friends. Football friends, yeah. I mean, I'm like this fucking old sadster who doesn't drink, and I get adopted. I get adopted by all these young fellas and dragged off to nightclubs. I mean, it's it's extraordinary. And where, even where I'm sitting in West Ham, when I first took my uh, place at the Bobby Morse, I didn't know anyone because my my other mates were sitting in the uh, more expensive bit at the time, and I thought I'm not paying nine hundred quid a year. 500 is more my speed yeah. and now i'm mates with all the people around me the this guy dean who sits next to me and his son harry they're made up because i got them both a ticket for frankfurt as well oh, um, fucking hell, i should have moved my seat closer towards you <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Mate, you know and like like that guy just said west ham fans best best fans in the world and yeah. when you're away it's there's like a camaraderie you know, that you don't necessarily get the home games where everyone looks out for each other. Yeah. You know, there's a really good feeling. I actually really love the, the away games that I've been to. I don't I really... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've I, I've always enjoyed... Obviously, I haven't been to the ones in Europe, but I've always yeah. personally enjoyed away games anyway because there's that sense of tribalism in there. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Away games yeah. are better anyway. You know, you sing louder because you're outnumbered and all that, but I can only yeah. imagine... I can only imagine what the away games have been like in Europa League. You know what I mean? It's been immense, mate. You know, yeah. and the support has been phenomenal. Yeah, it no, really I can imagine. It's just, it's just like it's just disappointing that people who have got high amount of points can't even get a ticket. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's, it's a nightmare, really. But we'll talk about. Yeah, that but later. I mean that that was always the case. You know, you that that's always gonna gonna be the gonna be the way when you have a point yeah. based system. And 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 this is the thing where. We've got such a large support, a support that you know I can I can go back ten years and we were only getting fifty percent of the support that we got now. Yeah, um, but that's only because that's, that's only because that's all we could fill. Well, well, you say that, but I, I mean I don't want to drag it down, but I mean I can point to probably games not in the last season at Upton Park, but certainly the seasons before that where we were getting 30, 31,000 and you could walk yeah. up on the day of the game and buy a ticket, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, that is a fact. It ain't it ain't me just digging out no, what's going no, on. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, but how many season ticket holders have we got now at the London Stadium? Yeah, we got, uh, aye, aye. Uh, uh, lads, please, no waffling now. Yeah, because Nick's here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So, <laughs> mixing a silhouette, Nick. Why are you yeah. mixing a silhouette? What He's trying to on? accentuate that grey beard. Yeah, <laughs> nice, isn't it? Do you like it? <laughs> yeah. It's just like a head. There's no Basically, body. It makes it's me distinguished head. looking. Yeah, it takes so, I'm sorry I'm late. It's Nigel's fucking quiz has done me up. I've just had to sign up. Oh. Remind me at the end. Remind me at the end. I've had, it took me an hour to fucking type up that quiz. And then <laughs> I couldn't save it in Kahoot. So I've had to sign up for a pro plan with a seven-day free trial. And if I don't remember, it's going to cost me two and a half hundred quid. So please remember. <laughs> no one remind him. No one remind him, please. Remind I'm me to cancel it, please. <laughs> it's all Nigel's fault. I bet we still get a copyright strike on it as well, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Take your money. 
How you doing, David? You all right? I'm great, mate. Yeah, good to see you. And good you, see and you. That's you, good. Missed, you missed my tales of European travel. Oh, <laughs> sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. You've, you've been all over the gaff, you haven't you? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just show you some of the images, Nick. Look, just quickly. Look, Seville. Uh, oh, Seville. Uh, he sent me this one in Lyon where he met some of the lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went out to a nightclub till 4 a.m. and he don't drink, so that's brilliant. Um, <laughs> Seville again, I believe, that day. No, that was Leon. And that Sorry, woman Leon. next to me also works for UEFA. And oh, that's oh, that's it. And Name dropped that... it all your... F oh, God, help me. <laughs> oh, and, uh, bloody hell. This last holiday image, this last holiday image, where's this one from? <laughs> Australia. That's, that's a whole different... Do you know, we shot that, I think, somewhere near Finsbury Park, and it was the coldest bloody day I've ever encountered. I literally froze my ass off, and then I got in the car on the way home, drove up Holloway Road, and it was an Ar there was an Arsenal game on. So all the Arsenal fans across it, I dozed off at the wheel. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I went smack straight into the back of this oh, man. And these four burly builders got out and they were like, You're right, mate, northern guys. And then they lifted my car off the tow bar and turned back around and got in the car. And that, that was my day filming that scene because it was so cold. I fell yeah. asleep at the wheel. Got a couple of couple of comments. Lawrence Watkins, uh, Dave, wants to volunteer his services. He can be in your movie. His actor name is Buck Naked. That's all right. Uh, you got the uh, job, mate. That sounds great. <laughs> For you, Nige. Um, he also, Steve Sprague's also follows. Yeah, oh, Steve has got good taste. Yeah. A fella That's... tanner. You, know, yeah. you won't see Not Steve Sprague. Not many of us Sprague. left, Nige. Not many of us left. We were saying he was coming over soon. With Danny. For the Arsenal uh, game, isn't it? Yes, for the yeah, Arsenal next game. Week. That's next weekend, isn't she, it? She brings yeah. up football in the States and people look at me like, like I have two heads. In Missouri. In Missouri. Well, you know, yeah. Expected, isn't it? Expected. You yeah, just spread listen, the word. I'm, I'm half American, and I've spent a lot of time in America. And I went to junior high over there. They don't know what football is. It might be a bit different now, but they always called it soccer. And if you yeah, mention yeah, yeah. football in America, they just think gridiron. Yeah, so, yeah, I know. I know. What well, question for you, David? What's better, Leon or Camber Sands? <laughs> <laughs> Camber Sands, definitely. <laughs> no, probably no, deeper. <laughs> to be fair to Leon, the food was amazing. It is it is the gastronomy uh, capital of. I read that. I read that. Yeah, yeah. The food was. How did you get on with the people over there, though? I've had, I've had a few people that had some some complaints about it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't do. want to be horrible. Apparently, the French were, were were not very nice to us when we was over there. Oh, imagine, they're not. Imagine the, Nick and Leon. Jesus, they're God. not the friendliest uh, people. Pints, in the world please. Yeah. Oh, so Mercedes, <laughs> they'll be over here for the semi as well. Of course, they will. Well, so they, got be... well, they got tickets for it. Then. Oh, so that'll be... is that what for the first? Oh, they've leg? Got, they've the... got tickets. They've got tickets for the semi as well. Yeah. What the oh, second yeah. leg? The second yeah. leg in no, Frankfurt. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. The one that's on Thursday. Thursday. They're, here next, they're here by next Thursday. Oh, okay. And then we're talking about semis. So Barney, you have to go and load a tone, don't you? I hope that's Barney, my mate. I hope that. I think that's Barney, my mate. It happens when you get when you get when you get David from in between us on here. That just lowers the tone, doesn't it? It's what happens. Unbelievable. For a classic show until then. It's pretty difficult to lower the tone on this gig, I have to say. <laughs> Come on, phone me up and tell him I'm, I'm quitting. This my head doing my head <laughs> right. So yeah, no. So well done, Dave. So I mean, you know, you, you've 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 lived every boy's dream. You're going all these away games, and I'm right. still sitting here watching it on Sally. I feel um, so lucky, and you know, Frankfurt. I mean, that could be a bit naughty, Frankfurt. But um, I know, reckon it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. I mean. The, the odds are it's going to kick off. That's what everyone's saying. But yeah, I, I think it'll be okay. Well, Leon were meant to be coming round to all the yeah. West Ham bars the night before, and that never materialised, did it? No, no. Well, yeah. the, the the only thing I'd say about that is that they were they there was there was about a mob of two hundred of them mm. that um that got corralled by the old Bill and the old Bill um I know some people that look after West Ham and said uh, they would put them on par with Millwall. For the way yeah. they behaved, really, right. really, yeah, that mob. Had, but the thing about European football, people got to remember, is every club has got its set of fans that want to have a go. It yeah, might yeah. be two hundred, it might be five hundred, you know. That? But that's what that's what it'll be. 
You know, yeah. the game, is, George, at, at the end of the game, they did all kick off. And yeah, I've, tried yeah, to I've but, but there's 60,000 Leon fans there, yeah, yeah. and a thousand caused trouble. So 59,000 yeah. fans didn't. But as we've done throughout our West Ham supporting career, it's always to the minority. The, yeah, that caused the trouble, and what then we the, just... what was one of, one, one of the one of the early group games at home? I can't remember who we played, and, and they had about three, Vienna. They had about no, no, no there was another one. They was all dressed Zagreb. They had about Zagreb, thirty. Yeah. They had about forty fans, and they was all dressed in black. They were literally just the hooligans that turned yeah. up. There was no <laughs> one else there. There was no. I'd, one I'd, love, I'd love, I'd love Palace to get in Europe because I'll tell you what, Europe wouldn't know what it is if they're if they're ultras went out there, would they? Oh, the <laughs> all, that, all that choreographed dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we not call them the Nigels, please? Leon's badge is like Millwall, isn't it? And my my French mate, who's a Marseille supporter, said that they are the Millwall of French football. Mm. But, well, yeah. that, that, they had part of the ground. A part of the ground where, where they tried to set on fire after the game and everything. They um they attacked Payette. Um, at a corner. Is that was that oh, was yeah. that one? Was that yeah? One? And 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 Marseille oh, right. players walked off the pitch, and oh, I was yeah. watching the game, um, <laughs> and and refused to come back on. And I'm I'm pretty sure that the the, the the French football authorities made them close that part of the ground, and and I think they gave the game to Marseille. Right. Um, yeah, like because it it's, it hadn't been the first time. That yeah. when like an opposition player had come to take a corner, that have um, um, have, Frank, Frank, have, have Frankfurt sold their allocation for our stadium? They, they must have. They will do. They will, they will have. Have. I've got a mate from Germany who's a Hanover supporter, and he said Frankfurt are the best supported team in Germany. Away from it, home. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. They took thirty thousand away to Barcelona, apparently. Yeah, that's well, right. Yeah, I, I got a friend, like my mate's a German West Ham season ticket holder, and he, he's coming over from Germany with a game. And I think he told me that for the Frankfurt home game, they had two hundred and fifty thousand fans apply yeah. for tickets. Bloody well, Ballon Dawson in the comments has said that someone called Jurgen's offering three hundred euros already. Oh, you know it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> no, yeah. The, 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 well, the, the thing is, I got screen, sent screenshots of Eintracht Frankfurt fan forums, and they were putting on the details of how to join the club's waiting list for a tenner. Yeah, yeah. Which they then would then, and then they were putting the instructions on how to then, once the tickets go and sell, go and buy a ticket. Well, well so, Nick said that Nick said that he saw Germans online uh, demonstrating their Cockney accents, didn't you? Nick? I can't find them now. Honestly, it was the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And one of them did pull up because what it was their rationale was their rationale was they they were looking at getting trying to get tickets in the home end, and they said the security. I'm not going to do a German accent, but they said the security was they might stop them, so they're going to. I was trying to do Cockney accents. <laughs> we have ways of cleaning the chimney. <laughs> Shine your shoes. You know when Carl, you know when, you know when Carlos Tevez come on the pitch the other game and they went, "Come on, you ions." Yeah. <laughs> we are Cockney, yeah, yeah. You know what? Though? You, you know what though, Nights? We've we've got some out of towner fans that don't speak proper Cockney, so they will be sitting anyway, won't they? Well, I mean that's the thing, you know. Three quarters of the fan base now <laughs> fucking wouldn't know, wouldn't have ever lived in East London, let alone uh, <laughs> speak reckon the lingo. They reckon they've reckon they bought loads of tickets in our end. I, and I'm in two minds about this because we've gone to these other grounds have bought loads of tickets in their heads. And if they manage yeah. dog eat dog with a ticket, isn't it? You, you know what I mean? If you sit there and behave yourself, and and then I yeah. me, I don't have a problem. You know, I've sat in 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 omens. You know, in every grand in London. The only um, time that's yeah. going to be exactly. awkward because if if you looked at the Barcelona game, there were Frankfurt fans in kit. They they were in, they were in they were in full colours in the Barcelona end. That's all well and good, unless Frankfurt are beating West Ham. Then you don't really well, want to be. I'll tell you something. Where I where I sit in the Bobby Moore upper tier, they were fighting amongst themselves. The yeah, last they were. Year. I know. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's a really toxic atmosphere. And I think it's because a lot of the people that go are not season ticket holders. They're yeah. like, you know, trying to prove a point. Young kids want to stand up. Yeah, yeah. want to stay. It was the stand up, sitting down problem. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if Frankfurt fans get in that end, there will be a ruck. 
Well, you know yeah. the biggest the biggest cause of it, the biggest cause of it that I've that I've heard anyway when there have been problems is where people will go down at half time, they'll come back to their seats, and there'll be uh, there'll be people st- there'll be people sitting in your seats. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's the most common one where they where they're going and trying to sit with their mates, and it's um yeah. I don't think they realise how it works, you know. Yeah. Well, I know in the uh, in the in the lower tier um, Bobby Moore section, everyone stands, and you yeah. know it doesn't matter how many seats are allocated, loads of people just go down there. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's good in there. Though. That's where Gary is. That's where, that's where Gary is down there. Is it? it's, it's, yeah, no, it's good. It's good down there. <coughs> yeah. no, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's my favourite place. It's my favourite place. It's kind of. It's almost as good as. No, it ain't, but it's kind of almost. <laughs> Shut up! Same. Don't say it. You know no. what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. The view's oh, similar. Yeah, the view yeah. similar. Oh, no way is the view it's similar. similar. It's similar <laughs> to Tesco's on Bleeding Parking Road. <laughs> You're that far away from the. Pit. You'll buy Urkans. I'm a bit <laughs> watching the game from Urkans. That's <laughs> where you are. No, no, I'm, I'm, about, I'm, about, I'm about 10 feet oh. further back than I was in the old Bobby Moore Lower. That's where I am. So it's very similar. It's very similar to me. <laughs> Do you know where I'm sitting? I'm sitting on the houses on Green Street. I'm, I'm looking back. over You're the walls, gates. Back. I'm looking <laughs> over the gates at Upton Park. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary is a Sean Whetstone of Claret and Booze. He is. He is, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Whatever. Right. Should we should we move on with the uh, the the, the yeah. European stuff and stop uh, waffling, boys? Yeah, let's move to let's move to Nigel. So, Nigel, you can talk about the the last I... time we met Eintracht Frankfurt. Yes, it, 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 it it's a strange coincidence. I've got a little story to bore people with, but basically, what happened is is that at the beginning of uh, this season, um, I was uh, I was passed on to the uh, club historian of Eintracht Frankfurt. And Eintracht Frankfurt in their stadium have named the conference suite West Ham United. Wow. And it was done in honour, and it's a strange honour, yeah. it's done in honour of the 1976 European Cup Winners' Cup final, which West Ham defeated Eintracht Frankfurt. And it's a strange thing because he did, when he told me, he says, yes, we're still bitter about it. We still remember that game. Right. Um, the, the, the strange thing about it is, is that four years later they actually won the UEFA Cup. So well, yeah. they, you know, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, not yeah. the closest they'd got to winning, but they still remember this game. It, it's a quirk of fate, I think, that we've been drawn against them again. It was the semi-final. You just said final. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. sorry, it was the semi-final in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the European Cup. Wins the semi-final. We lost the first leg um, in two-one in Frankfurt. And then I think it was um, I think it was Graham Padden that scored an absolute cracker out in Germany, but uh, Upton Park uh, I think in the rain. Uh, it, but it was it's a game that gets voted regularly by all different West Ham websites as the greatest night at Upton Park. West Ham won three one. Uh, two of the goals were absolutely world class. Keith Robson scored a perler, but then Brook in to win the game. Yeah. Absolutely topped it off on a mud heap of a pitch, a twist and turn. The old Trevor shimmy, yeah, and then bears down and bends it into the bottom corner. And West Ham are on their way to Brussels. I actually, I actually watched it back on YouTube. I'll, I'll let you carry on, Nigel. And I must yeah. admit, the, the goal, the goals were impressive. Yeah, I mean, the, the like thing that. about that to qualify is it was weird because uh, obviously we'd won the FA Cup in 1975. We were doing quite well in the league up until January, February time. But then the European competition kicked back in in March um, when uh, I think we played. We played Den Haag in the quarterfinals. We'd lost to Den Haag in in, um, Holland. Uh, Did did it like a Frankfurt again where we beat them on away goals, I think, um, uh, uh, at Upton Park. So we lost 4-2, I think, in Holland. And then right. beat them three one at Upton Park, so we went through on away goals. Um, and then what had happened is, is that our league form tailed away so bad that we, we we only finished, I think, two places above the relegation spots, two or three. <laughs> but we got that, to was the that because final. was that because of Europe? Was that because well, our, our focus uh, was was on was on Europe? You know, it, um, you would look at it. Nice. That actually, if you look, there was a lot of similarities to this season, and uh, we we were sitting about seventh, eighth in the table, which was pretty decent. Bearing in mind back then, West Ham's highest ever finish was six. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, 
and then it was I believe I think it was um it was John Lowell's first full season as manager. He took over at the start of the previous season with, with Greenwood moving upstairs. It it sort of become what was called like the first team coach, then became the full manager with yeah. Greenwood sitting upstairs. Um and and so the, the the why the form tailed away we can only surmise it was European competition but I think in the in the league I think they only won one or two games out of the last twelve. Oh, wow, you know, yeah. but yet you look at the the, the European stats and you, you you just see well we we get away with it time and time again and that's why I say about the Leon being our greatest ever performance on the continent because yeah. when you actually look back you know. We'd, lo- we'd lost in Frankfurt. We'd, we'd lost, you know, we lost a lot away in Europe, but we always did the business at home in, in yeah, the two leg yeah. tie. Was it, was it better than Mets in the Intertoto? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, in, in, a, in a way, I think it, I think it, Leon surpasses Mets for me as, as being bigger comp, like, yeah, bigger yeah, comp, yeah. Uh, and, and a, uh, Mets, I think Leon are a, are a bigger team than Mets as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mets was the Intertoto Cup. Um, so I think I, yeah, I, I, I thought at... Le- Leon was a fuck. It was a Met. I watched it, but I watched it about twice. It was magnificent. Yeah, it was brilliant. Well, they're was... a regular Champions League side, just yeah. like Seville, yeah. right? We were and we're, we've we've taken two massive scalps so far. We've got nobody yeah. to fear. No. no, I mean, I'm heartened to hear what you guys say about Frankfurt because right. I. Those, some of those goals I've seen, I'm like Jesus, amazing, <laughs> amazing shots. But you, you all reckon that Frankfurt are not doing very well. Oh, well, I think I think they're a good team. I think we we've got to take them seriously. But Gary's going to do it. He's going to do a do a review. But I think gonna, no no yeah. German team's easy. No. Let, let, yeah. let's, let's face it, and it's you know, and hopefully the the thing is they'd have watched us against Leon. Yeah. So actually, they've had that. Yeah. Where they can see the white, what we'll do, so they'll they'll know but, that even if we not, don't not, get anything from the home leg, that to be wary of coming at us too much in yeah. in the home leg. But that's yeah. that's where I think that the uh, the injury to Diop, although it's bad and it's causing a reshuffle, it could play in our favour because now they don't know what we're going to be doing. Yeah. We don't know no. what we're going to be doing. Yeah, no, 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 no. But now, 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 yeah. now Frank, 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 don't know what they're going to be playing. Yeah. They I bet. Well, they're, they're talking about playing well play. in defence. No, 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 no. God, no. That's what I read. Oh, What's that? He's, they're talking about playing Alex Kral in defence. Because he's well, played there for Spartak Moscow, and um, I, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna terrify you soon when I do the uh, when I do the preview but before we go there let's just go through some of the outstanding comments John you don't want to resume comment duty do you because you're good at it you're better at it than me I'm good at pressing a button and then I'm yeah. pressing a button so uh, go, really go for this one you've only got three pubes and you piss out of one of them that's one of your David your great <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember half of my lines. Was that what I mean? Mercedes, Mercedes, yeah, Mercedes has got her tickets for the semi. They're in the lower zone. Okay. Hey, Gary, uh, Nigel, someone thinks they, I'm sure Nigel is a couple of rows from me in the nosebleed blocks in two. <laughs> yes. Four. Yeah, I am in two. I'm in row 62, which, to be honest, is four rows further than I used to be. So <laughs> I used to be in row 66. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've got, I've got a feeling I know who Barney McGrew is, just so you know. Um, no, I think, yeah, I don't think you do. I think Barney's my mate. It ain't the one who said that I'm, um, what did he say I was? This is, we're quite a well built YouTube channel. Sponsored by Fuckers. No, it weren't. Yeah. It? <laughs> <laughs> he said heavy set, didn't he? Heavy set yeah, YouTube. Yeah, channel. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah fuck, fuck you, Len, if you're watching. Fuck you. He did. If he carries on, I'm giving out his real name, right? He um, did say, he did say, perhaps Sean can get you discount vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> and you each get a ten of each if you sign up the WW using Sean's code. And Dave, Dave, Dave and Gary are my witnesses. Before we come on, Nigel said, you've lost a bit of weight, John. Yes, he you know why? Because, I got, because, because the camera is only showing your head. No, because yeah, I got yeah. outed by Len, I've now on the, I'm on the duck. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk to him again. I'm not going to talk to him again. <laughs> We should have a weigh-in every Friday, John. We should compete. We have a weigh-in every Friday because we're both on it right now, right? We're both on it. it. Well, he can say what he likes about me because I'm running a half marathon in four weeks, so 
Nice. Yeah. I well, ate half a marathon earlier today. <laughs> a few, a few been, years ago. You're running to the toilet. Well, <laughs> a, few, a few years ago, when I was several stone lighter, I was running half marathons, and I even ran one marathon as well. I'll never do that again. No, but, my, um, my, my diet left away. I, I had two pies yeah. and two mash and maureen, maureen yesterday. That was lovely. Oh, what, 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 I drove past there a day, and I was so <laughs> tempted, but I was, uh, I was yeah. running late. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, we got Kieran Morning from Brisbane. Good morning to you, Kieran. Good day. Uh, Richard Stevens, great pass from to Tommy Taylor for the third. For yeah, Trevor. That's, a, that's the own game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember that season after January, didn't win a league game. Yeah. So, yeah. Nigel, that, that, but that blows out your theory, Nigel, because when Nick always says Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, you always say back in the old days they could do it no problem. They uh, did, they uh, played. Yeah, well, hold up, hold up, we got to the final. Yes, <laughs> it was no problem, was it? It wasn't a problem. And and actually, though, we didn't Nick, play Thursday, we got him, Sunday. Nick, I think we, got him. We, we played Wednesday, yeah, Saturday. Look, he's rattled. Look, he's rattled. You know, if we'd have played when Thursday, Sunday, perhaps we'd have done better in the league. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, the league form now is kind of irrelevant. And I agree. You know, if I we agree. win the Europa League, we're I in the Champions League. I couldn't care less about the league now. I, no, I and I and exactly. I couldn't, and I also couldn't care less about the conference. Who wants to be in that? Well, you, know? you say that. Oh, it's no, that. Really? Yeah, I'll it's take enough. it. It's the third yeah. place. I would say I would take yeah. it as opposed to no Europe. You know, well, yeah. well yeah, yeah, listen, yeah. you still get coefficient points in the conference league, so it is know, worth doing. It is worth it's, doing. It's worth doing, but it is. It's, 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 it's the NAF. It's, I'm going to come to that after. It's, it's right. the NAF European yeah. competition. But remember, we've got another something. one from Barney McGrew. Remember the Anderlecht defeat shown live on BBC. If my memory serves me right, yeah. heartbroken as a 12 year old. Lawrence, who lives Lawrence from the US, David, would you be my driver in Frankfurt? <laughs> well, uh, did you hear what I just said about falling asleep at the wheel? Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you sure, mate? And that was only in the other way road. Imagine going all the way to Frankfurt with you. <laughs> You'll have to prod me with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> could, have, could have could have won the final versus Anderlecht. Yeah, we lost four two. Yeah. Well, it was two all. I think well, at half time. Francois Van der Elst, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Lampard pulled a stomach muscle. Uh, he, he 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 gave a bad back pass, yeah. and I think he pulled his stomach muscle and had to go <coughs> off at half time. Only one sub then, and the sub that we brought on was Alan Taylor. So it weren't even a defender. Oh. That was oh, it. Yeah. Well, we're going to do a Q and A later, but Barn is uh, throwing a question out there now. But I don't think it's a genuine question. Question for Nigel. Whose hand did he hold when he ran on the pitch as a mascot? <laughs> it was Billy Bonds. Hey. Oh, hey. Six foot two. Hey, what about this one? Look, rumour. There's a rumour that Zuma trained today. You seen that one? You know, I've got a feeling that either Zuma or Diop's going to be playing next Thursday. <laughs> really? Yeah, just, I just, just feel it. Right. Do you not yeah. think it's just... Do you not what about Ogbonna? Nah. Ogbonna, nah. Ogbonna, I'd, I'd, well, look, he's, he's, been, well, training well, grass. he's been training on grass now. For that, I'm sure I saw that a month ago, it, that it report was, that he's training on grass. It was ruled out earlier in the week, wasn't it? They said he's not going to be anywhere near until two games before the end of the season or something. Oh, that's a shame. You never know, though, because they don't yeah. let a lot slip, do they? So no. you, you don't know. They might no, do. Sure. Who, who don't? Well, the the club. I mean that that thing that came out earlier in yeah, the week. One re, one report said Diop had done his Achilles. One, or, or as Nick would say, Achilles. Achilles. Um, this is Achilles. Yeah, Achilles one, Gary. Once once said that he'd done his his uh, his ankle was it or his knee? His knee. His and ACL, um, yeah. his ACL. And we don't really know which one it was, or if it was one of them at all, or if he's injured at all. Um, I I read today somewhere it could be his ankle. Could have him and Zuma with ankle injuries. So who knows? You know. I thought was, it was his ankle with Diop. Well, he was he was holding his knee on the pitch. Um, no, I but, read it was his ankle. I'm I'm sure yeah, I that's that's yeah. what I read. It was his. Uh, it was it was yeah, Achilles. Yeah. It was his Achilles. Achilles. It, it, it's yeah. a bit of who said he said what said. Uh, Sean, said. Sean said. Sean said. said. Yeah, because <laughs> because I don't care. He don't fucking watch this anyway. What? Because he he turned around and and said that a certain co-chairman had said about ACL. And then right. it was put out about ankle. 
And then yeah. he's going, well, who started the ACL rumour? And I had to point out to him, well, you fucking did. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sean's Actually. good at inadvertently starting rumours, isn't he? he is, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Dave, Dave do, you, do, you know, do you know who we're talking about, Dave? No. No. Okay, so Nigel, you're better off not knowing, to be uh, honest. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel's part of a very popular and very successful West Ham podcast um, called More, as in Bobby Moore, spelt that way. More than just a podcast podcast. I think they get, what do you get, eight listeners a week, Nigel, or something like that? I, well, I, I think, to be fair, I think we, we can safely say we get double that now. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That it is but a very good. So anyone who hasn't listened, it's, it's a brilliant I, podcast. I wasn't into it until I became a yeah. YouTube star, as I am now, um, <laughs> and I, I love it. And I was I was never someone into podcasts, and it's really good because you've got Nigel and Len, who used to be my favourite, um, who just basically attack Sean because they're all got different personalities. So it is really yeah. good. And, uh, yeah. there's, there's a free advert there. One day you might mention us on there, Nigel. Um, I do. I actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I read your question out, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, this is so this, the question this, read this, out. This, this comment here alludes to what Dave said and what I, I I've said this before the Burnley game. Why would league position matter? You know, it we may not win the Europa League, but we've got to put all our eggs in this one basket now. We, we do. We, we do. Go for it. No, no. So, I, 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 I think now we have put all our eggs in one basket by. Those the past few results is it, we, we've got a mountain to climb now to, to get you top, say that, to get top you, six. You, you say that, Nick, but then what do you do against Chelsea on Sunday? Because we can't oh. risk we can't risk getting someone like Dawson injured. So he's got to bite the bullet and not play his strongest. That's what team, I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying to you. I'm saying well, we really, put all of that. He ain't done it all season. Yeah, but he's got to. He can't now. He's he's got to literally. He, yeah, that, that's that's that's, that's training. Game. He's not, he's not like gonna drop balls. He's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it. What he's gonna do no on way. Sunday? What he's gonna do on Sunday? I'm telling you now is try out whatever he's gonna use on yeah. Thursday. That's what I it's think. a big risk for Dawson, though, Gal, isn't it? It is a big risk, but every game's a big risk. Rice could get injured. Anyone can get injured, no, no, and you no, could, no, and you no, could no, retrospectively we say, Gary, Gary, we we have one centre back left. Uh, no, no. Well, well, no, we still got Rice. No, we've got one centre back. I know. Listen, I. We all know that Crowell played centre half. I mean, what David mentioned earlier, he played for centre half at one of his previous clubs, Sparta Prague, was it? Um, I mean, he ain't getting a game anywhere. Um, you know, maybe, maybe he's been training. Maybe he's been playing at centre half in training all week. Who knows? I mean, that's the yeah. thing I love. And going back to the injuries, about the way information there's there's, a, there's often a little snippet that comes out, but sometimes it's completely wildly inaccurate. So you won't know what's happening until we see it on the pitch. So. Um, I just hope that Moisey gets it right, and I hope it's not a back three with uh, yeah. Masuaku oh, in there. I'll that, that, tell you what, if, if I see a back three, I, 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 yeah. I won't. Not against Chelsea. I don't care what we do against Chelsea. Play Masuaku. He was great last time, wasn't he? <laughs> brilliant, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah brilliant. Nigel, Nigel have, you seen, have you seen that in reference to 76? Yeah, it does. Sean knows yeah. his stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, you know, um, I, what he's saying there is, I think, is that Frankfurt were unbeaten in throughout Europe. the uh, Yeah, in Europe. Yeah. We, uh, which, yeah. you know, they are so far. Yeah, but I think it's fantastic actually that there's two teams that started the the, the Europa League, yeah, um, not in the Champions League that have got yeah. all the way. I think Rangers were in the Europa League all the way, aren't they? Which Rangers weren't in the Champions League either. No, they wasn't. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, I I just think it's fantastic actually yeah. for the quality of the teams in the tournament at the start because. You know, it's, yeah. uh, the, the, it's always been a bugbear of mine that they allow the failures from the Champions League to drop down. And um, yeah, I don't agree with that either. You know, I think no. it's wrong. No, it I, turns I, it into a consolation it dis, tournament. It, dis, it? Yeah. Discred it discredits the. Uh, the no, the, I think it yeah, does. It? I think it, yeah. I, I, you know, I really do think it. it I, yeah. I really do think it does. A bit, a bit of a comment there, obviously in reference to who we think you'll do against Chelsea, Moyes. If you think Moyes will ease off now, then you haven't been paying yeah, attention. That's, that's, that's Mark. What do you think, Dave? I think you agree he won't change. Yeah, I, th I think he's not done it all season. I thought against Burnley, we look really leggy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but we've got such a small squad. If he drops any of our main uh, players from the Chelsea game, we could get annihilated. Yeah. So yeah. I. I just don't think he's going to do it. Would 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 we would we as West Ham fans? Let's say you know what Big Sam did all them years ago, Nigel's friend, when he played the kids, right? If 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 Moyes went all in and played predominantly the kids, and we got beat six 0 would West Ham no. fans be 
I thought, I thought Sam Allardyce. I'd I'd be, I'd, I'd, no, I'd, I'd, no, I'd, Nick. Uh, Sam Allardyce was a massive prick for doing that, right? A massive <laughs> prick. He yeah, ruined no, no, a lot no, of promising young careers. Yeah, but Allardyce did that for a different reason. He was being a prick. Different reasons. He was being a prick. This is yeah. different. This, this Moisey, is Moisey, Moisey wouldn't be so reckless. He wouldn't be so reckless. He'd put a team out that's that's probably that he thinks reckless, can just about cope. Like, like John said, if, if Dawson gets well, injured. Well, you know, it's easy to say after the fact, isn't it? It's well, easy exactly. to look back and say, told you so, isn't it? And what Hammerhead has just said there, the Brentford game. Exactly we were, that. We were playing at half-mast. 100%. Yeah. And I yeah. said that. I said, yeah. I said, as a professional footballer, you don't get these opportunities come round often. And most West Ham players have come from lower league football. Their yeah. mind is going to be on Thursday night. So yeah. that's what happened against Brentford. And that's what possibly could happen against Chelsea anyway. So I don't really see the point in in playing Dawson and, and, and some no, of them no. players. You know, because their mind ain't good. They're not going to be flying in for tackles 100%, no matter if they say they will or not. Because there's always the fear of getting an injury and missing out on the biggest game of their career. Yeah, so, I know. I know. It's a, it's look, at the end of the day, we've got an exciting couple of weeks coming up, and, 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 and irrespective oh, yeah. of the problems, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, massive, massive. I'm looking, for, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how Moyes is going to solve this problem because I think he will. I think he'll, he'll, he'll come up with something. You know, we have got options. We've looked at it. We, we have got options. Um, well, so before, before we look at right. those options, shall I just move on to the news, which includes the Frankfurt preview? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's, on, let's, let's, let's do that. Right. Okay. Uh, right, Gary. Before you, uh, before you start. Go on. And now, for our Claret and Booze news. Well, Hammer's news, not the rest of the shit that we don't care about. Being delivered expertly and succinctly, that's easy for you to say, by our very own Gary. Uh, can I right. just say something quickly? Go on. He's only done that because David's on there. He's like he's auditioning or something. Isn't he? That's what, <laughs> is that what it is. Is that what it is? God, <laughs> like me, David. Like me, David. Yeah. Trying to get voiceover work. Yeah. <laughs> right. So look, two stories. I've, I've done some good ones, don't I? Don't I? Yeah, but no waffling, now, Nick. Just let Gary get on. Sorry. Yeah, you know what I mean, Nick. Yeah, you know, keep it down or I'll mute you. Uh, so I could do the Frankfurt preview and then the grow. Sorry, I just yes. muted you. Go on, go on, start again. No. Right, now stop pissing around because I'm going to move on to the Frankfurt preview. All right? <laughs> so. Eintracht Frankfurt pulled off an amazing victory away to Barcelona to win 3-2 in the new Camp. Or was it amazing? At first glance, this might seem a little bit worrying. Um, but when you take time to look at the game, you realise what, what actually happened. And it all began with a highly dubious early penalty for Frankfurt that was slammed home by Kostic, leaving Barcelona to chase the game. Then, uh, late running that half, Borre uh, added a second from 30 yards out when Barcelona literally went nowhere near him and allowed him a free shot from 30 yards. Now, lesson learned, Dave. We ain't going to let that happen. Then, once again, for the third goal, Barcelona defence was completely exposed. I mean, there was literally nowhere near Kostic as he as he slotted the third one in. So three very, very simple goals. And meanwhile, so inept were Barcelona that Aubameyang missed an open goal, which was harder to... Well, it was easier to score. So, and that was at 2-0. So it could have been, you know, you bring it back to 2-1, it could have been a different outcome. At 3-0, Barcelona had a goal disallowed, narrowest of margins before Busquets... Busquets uh, Biscuits, Busquets, slammed home from 25 yards out to make it 3-1. And deep into injury time, Barca pulled it back to 3-2. Uh, another dubious penny in my, penalty in my view. But nonetheless, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't all it seemed. When we saw 3-0 up at half-time, we thought, blimey, Frankfurt are slaughtering them. Well, yeah, they kind of were. But at the same time, Barcelona were terrible. And it's yeah. as much about that as Frankfurt being good. So West Ham have some selection problems. But frankly, so do Frankfurt. If we go into this slide here, we're going to the, the, the following players are expected to be out, and there are some key players there. You know, first of all, Evan and Dicker, unfortunate name. He got sent off right at the end, <laughs> and he's a he's a regular centre back for for Barcelona. He won't be playing. He played both legs against Barcelona and every other game. Regular in the team this season. Jackic, uh, defensive midfielder, yellow against Barcelona. He's banned. Um, Christopher Lenz, who's a left back, left back has got a fractured toe. Kevin Trapp, this is interesting. This is a regular goalkeeper. He's got a wrist injury. 
and um, he played both legs. And I think he got the injury at the weekend, so that'd be interesting to see how it goes. And also, uh, Gibral Sal, Sal uh, has got knee problems, and he's been a, a regular as well in the side. So there's um, there's a lot of, um, you know, with Frankfurt changing coaches every one or two seasons, Glasner, the current coach, will likely get fired if they're knocked out because they're sitting tenth in the Bundesliga. They've had a crap season. They've won ten games and drawn nine of their thirty, scoring forty goals, conceding forty two. 24 goals have come from open play, 12 from set pieces. 38% of their shots are from outside the box, so we've got to keep an eye on that. They had 25 and 33% possession in the two legs against Barcelona, so that means, like us, they're quite happy for the other team to have the ball. They lost last weekend 2-0 at Union Berlin, um, off the back of losing at home to Freiburg 2-1 the week before. Some of our fans said they only lost because the coach made 10 changes, you know, blah, blah, blah. He was a sensible coach. He made a load of changes, unlike David Moyes. He didn't. He made five changes, and a couple of those were enforced due to injury. And against Freiburg in, in the previous loss, he only made three changes after the first leg against Barca. So that kind of debunks that. They get booked a lot. 57 yellow cards in 30 Bundesliga games, 18 in the Europa League from only 10 games two reds in Europa and one in the league. Suggests they're extremely physical and so it'll be a battle. And goals this season have come from Rafael Bora up front with seven and four assists. Jasper Lindstrom in midfield, five with four assists. Philip Kostic, uh, four and eight assists. Even the one that's banned, Evan and Dicker, has, has got scored three plus three assists. Frankfurt fans, well, first of all, let's look at the formation. Let's look at what they play. Three, four, two, one. That's what they play. So basically, essentially, wing backs, five at the back. I hope we don't go like for like against them. That's what really frightens me that Moyes will do that. Frankfurt fans were banned from Liège in 2019 and also from the Emirates after crowd trouble against Vitoria in Portugal. Disciplinary action was taken for throwing of objects, crowd disturbances, acts of damage, and a late kickoff. So on and off the pitch, it'll be interesting, but I don't think that we'll, we'll have anything to fear from Frankfurt. We've beaten better teams already, and from what I've seen, there's no reason why we can't take our first leg lead out to Germany. But anyway, let's let's find out what, what you lot think. Let's go to... I'm going to go to David with this one. Well, they're like the West Ham of German football, aren't they? <laughs> Sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. What, well, that, that that's amazing, actually. Um, you know, I did, if all those players are either suspended or injured, um, then that does make our job a lot easier. Um yeah. I, I am worried about the shots from outside the box. That Sal scored an absolute worldie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Kostic, I think, is a decent player. Um, but, you know, that that does put it into some kind of perspective. Um, I did watch the Barcelona game. I thought they were sloppy in conceding those last two goals. Um, and I think if he get at them, they might, they might crumble. I don't think their defence... Uh, is as strong as um, you know as it could be. Mm. Uh, I was going to say as ours, but <laughs> well, Barcelona was definitely getting in behind them down the, down the flanks. But yeah. Bar Barca missed a lot of chances. Barca yeah. missed yeah. a lot of chances. They were they were yeah. wasteful, you know. Um, yeah. So as much as sorry to interrupt you, Dave, but as oh, much sorry. as Frank as much as Frankfurt were good, I think Barcelona were bad. Um, yeah. you know, and we know they're not the Barcelona of old and all this, but they still should have beat Frankfurt. Yeah, I was thinking, I don't remember too many teams scoring long-range goals against us this season. And it worries me a little bit because I don't think we've been tested in, in and that I think regard. I think with Areola in goal with a long-distance shot yeah. top corners and I'm more, I'm more uh, hopeful because he's a lot bigger, I think, generally. Yeah. But, yeah, and, and, and they're good at set pieces as well. So, you know, in some ways, they're quite similar to us. And I, I agree with what you just said. I hope we don't go three at the back with wing backs because yeah. every every time I've seen us play like that, we're not good. You know, and that's what that's what worries me is their formation. The fact that they yeah. play three at the back, I'm worried that Moyes might match it up. And I yeah. hope he don't because Barcelona played four three three against them, and that and that you know they opened them up a lot. Barcelona, it was just really bad finishing. End of the day, yeah. You, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to match teams up it's not something no, you, you don't. have to do no. well how, how about come up with a different make make them adapt to you why why have you why have you got a, you haven't got to copy the fucking opposition no. you know and 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 that's that's one thing that i have seen Moyes do on a few occasions when he does come up against a team that play three at the back he does seem to mirror it and it just yeah, it just yeah. yeah i hope he doesn't do that 
We haven't yeah. got, well, we haven't got enough centre backs anyway. I know you could play a couple of full backs in there, but oh, I, I, I would, in, in, in terms of our centre backs, I was listening to uh, something earlier and, and West Ham fan can't remember what I was watching there. And he said something quite interesting. If you had to, I know it's a horrible thing to say, but obviously, as we know, Zuma got injured. And if you, if you had to choose one centre back to get injured at Zuma and Dawson, Zuma, I know it sounds terrible. You don't Zuma. wish an injury on anyone. Yeah. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is who's been marshalling our back four, our back line over recent months. Personally, Dawson. I think he's been in, in, in a lot in the last five to maybe eight games. Zuma's been good, but Dawson's been the standout defender. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, Dawson's distribution has been phenomenal. It's he's amazing. Played, he's played it's some amazing. amazing ball he's, he's actually ball. he's growing as a player. I mean, I'd say, do you yeah. know what he did uh, when when he first came in? He did used to hoof the fucking ball. Yeah. He just used to get it and launch it mindlessly. He's not doing that anymore. He's yeah. picking, he's picking passes. Yeah, yeah. really good passes. passes. Really good yeah, passes yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. But that ball over the top to Ben Rama. I mean, it was, it was just line. immaculate, that was wasn't line, it? Yeah. Wasn't it? But I do think with us, if we play our A game, if we play like we did against Leon away and Seville we'll home, we'll I think we'll take them apart. We'll beat them. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, it, you know, on Sunday, we so lacking in energy and, you know, Rice had a shocker, I thought, on Sunday. So, yeah. we, you know, they've got to, they've got to get on, on top of it and play, play to their A game. Can, Which can, I, can I can I ask something before uh, before we go any further? Like the um, do we think that the Declan Rice news has just come out? Do we think that that could could cause any any? I told you we'd love problems? to talk about it, Nigel. Didn't I? Well, so no, 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 turn, no, 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 no. Because you turned up late. Could, no, you you. No, because you turned up late. Do, we discussed that earlier um, and just decided that, that we all agreed. Was... Nick, you was a lunatic. What, so what, um... I think I think the way it happened, Nigel explained it. Nigel explained it. He said, he said when when Sean let loose that bit of information on more than just a podcast podcast the other night, um, he probably wasn't supposed to release it, and it kind of yeah. got leaked a couple of days later. But but Sean said that it turned down two hundred grand a week on that, and said it agreed to yeah. stay till next summer. Right? It's the same news. Yeah, but do you, do you not do you not think that that's going to be dependent on whether or not we qualify for Europe next year or something like that? Yeah, he's, Maybe he's not, he's not just going to stay if we if we're um. Yeah. Thing is, thing is with Rice, um, the games that he's played, the European games, I think he's gone up another level. He's amazing. He, he's a big game player. He's a big yeah, game player. And I I just think you know they all know that this these next three well next two games against Frankfurt are going to be yeah. cup finals. Yeah. I just. I just think they're gonna turn it on again. Yeah. You know, they're gonna, even I don't care if we lose the rest of the games in the league. You know, no, if, same if we play to the top level in these games against Frankfurt, I think we'll beat them. So I agree, and we've what got do you think players. About Frankfurt, Nudge? Yeah, go on, go on, Nudge. What do I think about Frankfurt? What do you think about the tie? What do you think of that? I think they do lovely sausages. Um, <laughs> try the curry first. It's strangely very. Uh, I don't like. I don't yeah. like German German sausages. I've, I've tried them. Oh, on. they're the worst. I don't. I don't um, like them. Yeah. They're not nice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the German quarter of me coming out. Uh, <laughs> or is it one eighth? You like you out. like a bit of Schweinfleisch, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I tell you. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd, you know what? In a, in a way, um, I'd rather have Frankfurt than Barcelona. I, uh, um, personally, because I, I think the, the, I think we'd we'd possibly play the name, not the team. Possibly, um, and and you the fans right would have been wrapped right up with the name and not the yeah. team. You know, so I think by playing Frankfurt. It's, it's, it allows us to concentrate more on the game than the spectacle. Because by playing West Ham to play Barcelona in a meaningful game is would possibly the biggest game ever in the club's history. It, well, that that, know, that, that no, would that would become the cup final itself. No, and it? that's the thing. That's, and that's the and thing, yet yeah. we've got to keep our eye on the prize. I want to yeah. go. I want an away day in Seville. You know, yeah. I'm not going to do the Frankfurt trip. I'm saving me money for Seville, and I want to be out there. Um, yeah. so, and, you know, with the, with the right wind and, the, and the, 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 if the ball falls the right way for us, I've got, you know me, I'm, 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 I'm normally, I can look back in history and go, well, this is why it won't happen. And this is why it will happen. And for a long time, 
probably since this field game, I fully believe that we can go on and win this. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. not just be there, and I've never felt like this. Mate, since I was a kid and I didn't understand football. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you feel like this is our year? 100%. Yeah, I do. I do. I, do. Yeah, I actually, yeah. I actually do believe, and a part of it is because I do look at the other two teams, and I look at it and I think, well, we can beat them. You know, yeah. Yeah. Line. Yeah. if we can do Leon, if we can no, do Seville, yeah. if we can do Zagreb, yeah, you know, if we can go to um, do Vienna, also, if we can do them. Also, what what it, what it shows to me is the strength of the Premier League because. Mm. You know, the, yeah. the, these, the you know, we underestimate the strength of the Premier League, and we're sitting seventh, which in most other leagues would probably be challenging top two, and that's not being derogatory. Top two, three, four would be right up there. But it, what I mean is, if you go down to like the Spanish league, the French league, the teams in seventh, eighth, they're not, they're nothing. They're not, you know, they're not no, the quality of the Premier League. And the thing with the Premier League is, you know, we play, we play quality teams maybe apart from Norwich, we play quality teams week in, week out, right? And a lot of these other European teams like Frankfurt and, and, and Seville and that, they don't come up against, they don't have the competition that we regularly have. You know, the Premier League's renowned for, you know, anyone can beat anyone on their day. And that's I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else as well. You know, in that Lyon game, when, was it a Camby who hit the post? Yeah. They, they had the better of us for 20 minutes. And I yeah. think if that shot had gone in, the game may have been a lot different. But True. when that didn't when that didn't go in, you could see West Ham just grow. And then Dawson scored the goal, and everyone's like, "Oh fuck!" Is this yeah. gonna happen? <laughs> then we get the second. Then Rice gets that deflection for the second one, and then we hit the third. And you could just see us grow, and the belief was yeah. there. And yeah. I think we've got the momentum. Yeah, and I, I think. You know, the yeah, if you look at it we, uh, under Moyes, I've always said the. the the, the work of a great manager is how well he can rally the people at half time, especially when they're down. Yeah. So if they're losing a game, he, he can go out. I mean, and if you look at the first leg against Leon, we just had Creswell sent off. You know, we, we're facing an uphill um, struggle. Whatever we've done at half time, it gets them out there ready. We go and take the lead. That is yeah. so un-West Ham like. Yeah, really yeah. You know, really ten is. men to take the lead. There, 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 is, there, is, there, is, there is belief, isn't there? There's belief no, that, in that and that's group what of I'm players. saying. And, and, and if there's, you look at, yeah. there's games when we've been down at half-time and we've come out and we've come back. And in, Well, you know, the Burnley game, you know, we've come yeah. back. We've won the second half. Yeah. Sometimes I've looked at defeats where we've lost 3-2. We've been 3-0 mm. down at half-time and we've come out and we've won the second half, and you think, well, so therefore there is something there for the people you, to work on. And I, I you know, do you, do, you, do you think? Do you think though we like being underdogs? Is that mentality of liking to be an underdog? I don't yeah, know about. I don't think we think of ourselves as underdogs. Yeah, I, I, I think, really I think when you when you look at those when you look at those players, John, do you think that there's a vast majority of that squad, probably a majority, not a minority, who don't really give a toss who they're playing against, right? Well, and no, you look, you, you look at. Look, yeah. look at look at the players. I mean, Rice don't care who he's playing against. Right? No, no, no. Suf, no. Suf, Suf, and Suchek don't give a toss. I'm not, Johnson... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying the fan, West Ham fans or the players think they're underdogs. But from the outside looking in, you know, when, yeah. when we got when we got drawn against Seville, you know, I have got Arsenal friends, Tottenham friends, who was pretty much saying, you know, that's going to be hard. You're not going to get yeah, through yeah, that. Yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. then we got and then we got Leon and similar comments come out. Yeah, you done well against Seville, but you know, Leon, you know, da 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 da. Yeah. yeah. And I just think that that sort of mentality that we've got is almost like not underdogs, but nothing to lose because these yeah. players have come from, you know. Oh yeah, no, I think from that perspective, I think yeah. it's more than that as well. If you look at our midfield, got Rice, Suchek, Lanzini, Fornells. That's one of yeah. the strongest midfields anywhere. It is, and yeah, that's what I think is getting us through in both in Seville and Leon. That. Um, the combination of those players yeah. was so I, strong. I'll quickly throw this in to use then, because I think it's it. Would would you contemplate, bearing in mind that we've got a plethora of midfielders, actually then moving Declan Rice yeah. to centre half? I think yeah. that would be. I think that would be the wrong thing to do. I I I I, I would. I would. Yeah. When only, reason, only reason being is because we're we're we're, we're over budgeted in central midfielders. We've got we've got Lanzini. You can play. Central midfield and deep. Suchek, don't forget Suchek's best game this season was against Watford when Deck weren't there, and he was he was playing the CDM role. He was mm. playing deep. 
So Suchek can do that. Suchek can but, play that role. And you've got four nails that can do box to box. What I would say about that though is that Rice Rice is um is running back anyway and helping yeah. out the defense anyway. But what he's got going forward, as he proved in Leon with the goal, is he's Absolutely, you know, he's yeah. coming of he's coming of age. As yeah. a midfielder, I think he, it would be a mistake to restrict. Yeah, him. what I mean, about Suchek then? I mean, that's the other. Has he ever done? Has he ever he's, done that? Has he ever filled that? Didn't he? Suchek, he's all right. Has he ever? Oh, well, you saying put him in the? Put yeah, him put him the... at centre half. Mm. I, 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 yeah. You know, right. we're obviously struggling now, and we've yeah. got midfielders to come in, and I think we could. The only, the only thing I say to that about Rice when Nick brought it up last week, I sort of thought, yeah, it's not a bad idea, but. I've been thinking about it, and the difference is, is if you take Rice out of the midfield, whilst you've got somebody that can do his job, you haven't got anyone that can do it as good as, right? No, no, no. And no. And, and the difference is, is we've lost Zuma and now Diop. We do have people that can play centre-half at least to that standard, I think. So what I'm saying is, is you're taking Rice, you know, out of that position, which he does so well, you ain't got no one else that can do that job. What, but what, what about the what, But what about look, listen? I know that Dawson can play the odd long ball. I know he can do that, right? Don't but what about no, no? No, what I'm saying is, but what about having a player with a range of passing? So for us playing out from the back, you have got someone with Declan Rice's ability to get us on the front foot, and then you've got Suchek holding, and you've got two technical players in Lanzini and Fornells in the middle. Um, I, I, I personally, I think it could work. I sold it to myself the other day on that on that show that I yeah. did. But well, look, I tell you I, what, Declan Rice started as a centre back. Yeah, when he yeah, broke yeah. into the West Ham's yeah. team, it was a centre back, and I, I yeah. think it was Pellegrini who sort of played him in this central um, defensive midfield role yeah, but... and and persevered with him. Yeah, and and it, I suppose it was an early mark of how good the boy was. He actually grew yeah. into the role, and I think he wanted to play there because I think he saw a way into the England team easier yeah. than playing at centre back. Yeah. And I think that's why he is a, he's a CDM. He, he, he will always, oh, he is now hundred percent. Even if he does a job for us at centre back, he ain't, yeah. ain't going to become a centre back. No, but, and what I'm saying is, yeah. you know, like the days when we had Ian Pearce up front. You know, or yeah, God yeah. Never been. I remember <laughs> yeah. those old enough a gal, uh, Paul Wilton playing up front. Oh, um, God, who was a yeah, centre yeah, half? Yeah. You know, we run out of strikers, and, and Johnny Lowe goes know, up. Do you down know, down my worry front. is he might he might try this against Chelsea, he might put Rice at the back and bring Noble in. That, oh, that's, no, no, that's yeah, yeah, that'd be wrong. That'd be wrong. Yeah, from no, the whoa, start, whoa, I think that would be, be wrong. No, 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 you say that, but when when Noble came on against Leon, he made a really important interception. Oh, listen, David, yeah, no, no, David's sub. perfect he's, 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 he's perfect for coming on and shutting the game out. That's what Moyes has been using him for. I don't think he's got the legs anymore to do a whole game, but you know, we got to save him at a Man City game. Let me let me say that, Nigel. Let yeah. me say that to you, Nigel. Nigel, right? You will be crying in Noble's last game at the London Stadium. I bet you oh, you will yeah, shed a yeah. tear. Listen, I didn't you. even cry when Brooklyn's last game against Everton. So, no. um, and um, I, you know, I've I've never cried when a player's retired. And um, the last great West Ham player to do his full career and retire is, I think, Steve Potts. Yeah. Oh, his last game, the poor sod weren't even brought on by Road. Yeah, I think that would no. have gave him 400 games for West Ham in the uh, league. And so, so, no, it'd be, you know, it'd be, well, look, at the end of the day, he's been a great servant of the club. Yeah. He's been a good captain. <coughs> and I won't go that far, though I used to think that, but obviously we all know uh, why I don't think I've got now. his boots. I've got his boots. Well, you're welcome boots. to him. He never <laughs> wore them. Exactly. One boat. <laughs> One boat, yeah. I I do I do you could have bought, think, you could have cut his foot off and paid less. <laughs> I do think he might give um he might give Crow a go at centre back. Well, well how many times this season have we fought really Crow a go and he hasn't, you know? Listen, I wouldn't mind I, I wouldn't mind if he's gonna try it out, I wouldn't mind seeing that Sunday because it gives I, some I, it gives someone else a rest, doesn't it? Would you rather see Elise, who's been playing at centre back for the under twenty threes regularly? Yeah, yeah but would. Nick, yeah, but Nick, we're promise. going with all due respect. How much no, as a, no, no, John, as a, no, John, as opposed to Crow, as opposed what to Crow, I mean, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, maybe, yeah, because... yeah, yeah, as opposed to Crow, yeah. not, not as opposed to Declan Rice, but if he's going to put someone else in to keep Rice in midfield, I'd rather Elise over Crow. 
Yeah, yeah but, but at least he it's... hasn't got experience at the top level, whereas no, that's, that's true. true. That's true. You're not you're not going to put Alisi Alessi in centre back for Chelsea as an audition for the European game because, with all due respect, I've never seen Alessi play apart from the Ghent game. So mm. I'm only going by what people are telling me how good he is. I don't really know how good he is. Yeah, but if you watch under twenty three football regular, you'll it's see not, a good player. Yeah, yeah but what you see is an under twenty three player playing against under twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. Like, if they ain't playing, it ain't like the old days. And this is why I've long campaigned they should bring back reserve football I so the youngsters really cool. can play against the old pros that have yeah, been in yeah, yeah. And they yeah. learn because they get kicked to shit by the old pros that are coming back. <laughs> and it taught them how to play football. Yeah, yeah. Like in the, in the, get them ready for first team. It's, uh, Nigel, do you, do you not think it's, it's, it feels a little bit not... It's, it looks and feels non-competitive when you watch under 23 football. Yeah, I, I used to go it's, over it's back in a training game. A, a, a lot. Yeah. It, the problem I used to go there. They used to play Sunday afternoons at times and and, and midweeks. Not on, I can't do Monday night obviously because I do the podcast, so that it's a problem. But before that, I used to go over Dagenham and watch there. And I, and I remember De- Declan was there, and, and yeah. we and I went over there to watch Reece Oxford. Yeah, and, and that's probably the first time I saw Declan, and it was like you think, well, he, he's a bit. You know, I remember watching Tony Martinez, and he he's, he. He, he he was playing okay. He, he missed a few, and my mate turned around and went. It was quite funny because my mate turned around and went, "That Martinez ain't all that, is he?" And then all of a sudden, he got a couple of goals. And what happened is, we were sitting on the archway line. He come running over to where me and my mate were, and we're sitting there thinking he's he scored a goal, and he's running over. Yeah. And as he gets to us, he high fives the bloke sitting next to us, and it was his brother. <laughs> <laughs> and he's was, yeah. and listen to me and my mate going, I don't get the thing about Martinez. He ain't all that. He's just a few sitters. And he's got to go. But then he came on against Shrewsbury. No disrespect. I've never known a player to make his debut after the fans have already started singing his name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. yeah? And he and he was awful, wasn't he? And he was he didn't awful. really do well. No, no, he didn't. But he's doing yeah. all right now. And no, he... yeah. But what it is, it's like mm, the old yeah, adage really. where... Players that we've looked at, we thought, right, you're going to have to move on. They will go away and they will do well. But is yeah. he doing it in the Premier League? Bearing in mind, we're a Premier League and we wanted a Premier League striker. Is yeah. he doing yeah. it there? No, he's not. No. Yeah. You know, Tony Carr yeah. will sit and tell you. I've, I've heard enough interviews with him recently. There ain't. Show us the player that has, that, that has left this club. And gone on to be a top premier that's in that, that's in, yeah. in that is embarrassed us, and I still oh, go right, back yeah. to Ray Allen. He's the only oh, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. that yeah. that actually we let go, and that was in 1982. Yeah. It's true. Actually, actually, I've got I've got, I've got to say, t- Tony Carr is one of the most interesting fucking characters I've watched from in terms of sort of uh, in and around from West Ham. In in recent in recent months, he's done a few shows, and he he's yeah. superb. Well, we've done one he's, with Ian Dow that we put on brilliant. this he's week brilliant. on more than just a podcast, hour yeah. and twenty minutes, and um, yeah, I can listen. I've listened. He did one with Stop Hammer Time that I he's thought amazing. was probably the best Stop Hammer Time. I mean, that's how polite I'm being. I'm not calling them shit Hammer Time. I <laughs> thought that was the best Stop Hammer Time podcast yeah. that that um those boys have done. Yeah. Um, listening to Tony Carr, so yeah. And if you if you want to go out, I'm not on commission. Go and buy his book, people, because yeah. it's going to be a fantastic book yeah. about West Ham he's, and he's and, brilliant and and, and, and well, the, the way it brings through. One more thing, Nigel. So, you mentioned Oxford. Oh, well, it's on a transfer show. Before yeah. we move on, um, did you you've read all the stories about Oxford? He's he's doing well in Germany at the moment. He's do, he's doing really well. He is, is playing it, for Augsburg. Yeah, he is. <laughs> is, is, it, is it is it is it? But is there any, any risk? But is there any <laughs> risk? Is there any risk of us going back in for him? And if we did. No. Do you not think so? No. What's the point of that? What do you mean? What's the point? Why are you buying a good he, he left under a he left under a bit of a cloud. But he was he, young. He was a baby. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Right? He's been he's been in Germany for three years, I think, and he's only just started to play regularly. No, so, no, sorry, that's not true. He was he's, he was on the no, bench for a long time started. over there. He weren't. He was playing last season because yeah, I was watching racing, German man. football, and he, mm. he he's been playing, yeah. and 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 they fought a lot of him. I think they had him on loan and then signed him permanently. And he's been playing a lot of football. Yeah, I think he did well, have a yeah. bit of an injury last season. But he, he, Maybe he, that's what I'm thinking of, then, injury. No, he, he, he is doing well, John. 
They do right. I mean, Augsburg are not a great team, but they're, 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 you know, they're not a pub team. They're like, but they're not a big town team in Germany. And the fact that they're in the Bundesliga is quite a good achievement for them. I'm just going to fly through some comments because we've got quite a few quickly. Uh, We've got a Leeds fan who's watching us. I wouldn't have any fears going into either of the games, to be honest. I think you've earned the right to enjoy these days. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. to say there. Dawson has been immense. Love watching him. Yeah. Indeed. DJ Ross, Dawson has got some superb balls. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly has. Magnificent. Diop has a few assists this season from 40 yard plus passes. Yeah. Uh, John, I love Dawson more than you. I don't think so. And talking about Rice, who's going to pay the £120 million for him at the minute? Well, I'm not being funny. If I if I was Man United or Man City and I had £120 million to spend, there's no one better to spend it on. If, yeah, but they reckon, that, they reckon that Ten Hogs only got £120 million. Ain't going to buy it on one yeah. player, is it? Yeah. yeah. That amazed me. They, they, when he came in the other day, some paper said he's got two hundred million. He wants Harry Kane, Declan Rice, and about three other top players. I thought, well, you get one and a half of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you think that's what they're giving him plus player sales? Yeah. Oh yeah, true, very true. I forgot about that. Lucky Nigel's here keeps us on the straight. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> the board, the board need to show Declan they will invest in the club. Yeah, you know, that's the problem, isn't it? The lack <laughs> of investment. If if I was Rice, I'd be thinking they can't even be bothered in the January window. When they're in the Europa League to sign a defender and another striker, I yeah, want to. I just want to. I just want to bring up the January transfer window, right? And 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 I, look, I was as disappointed as most people, but what will there it? Is, there is no. There is no but. There's no but no, about there January. But. Right? There is a there but. Isn't any but. Right. There's no but about January. Show your face and come on here. He's vaping, isn't no, he? No but listen, about listen. January. There is yeah. a but. Listen, what I'm saying. Let me let me finish oh. now. No, just let me finish, Nick. You've said. You would take the Europa League and sod the league. If we if we lost in the final of the Europa League, would you still say should have bought in January? No, well, no yes, I'll be happy. You would. I'll, be yes, happy. You would. I'll be happy. I'll be happy at that point. But if we lose the final, lose job, I would absolutely say that. Yeah, but would if we lose the final, exactly. Yeah, if we if we don't get in Europe, if we don't get European football next year, it will of course go back to that because look. What, 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 just imagine, John. Just look, look, fast forward, right? Doomsday fucking scenario. We don't get European football. We don't win the final. Deck leaves in the summer. We can't. We couldn't attract players in January when we had European football or the summer. We ain't going to attract top quality players next year. So you said yourself before the January transfer window that was a massive yeah, I opportunity. I did. And it was. Yes, I agree. And, but but you are right, Moyes. We could be fighting our way out of it, and I and it, and it looks like I think we will. I think we will. I think because if we win, if we win the Europa League, then it doesn't Moise matter. Moise, Moise, Moise doesn't just matter. turn around and go, "What are you talking about?" January or the it team doesn't matter. Or... Yeah, it doesn't matter at that point. But yeah. even if we win the Europa League, I would still say it is uh, it... in spite of uh, the <laughs> yes, the thank people, you, rather than because yeah. of them. And it's all down to Moise. Oh, your yeah. next favourite, your next best mate now, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I, just, can I just point out that there's a stat that came out from a, a football website, and it's I saw biggest, it earlier. The biggest net spenders from Europe's top ten five years. leagues the in the last ten years, West Ham were twelfth. Was it twelfth? Twelfth yeah. with three hundred and seventy-four million net, net spend. spend. And the one thing I've always said is about Golden Sullivan is um. It ain't it ain't that they haven't spent money. It's the dog shit way that they've spent it. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the other they, thing they don't do, Nigel? Do you, know, do you know the other thing they don't do? We well, never there's sell. a list, we, mate. No, no, I don't no, about no, other. But we yeah. never ever sell for a profit. So well, no, um, no under really, them. Yeah. No under them. Uh, uh, we don't, yeah. We don't really. We never sell for a profit. A lot but of these we other sold clubs pay yet for a profit. I think I'm out of it. Bitch. We didn't feel like it. Though, did it? The thing is, right, it, for me, it goes back to Haller, right? If you're going to get rid of him for 20 million quid less than you paid for him, bloody replace him. Yeah. Because at one yeah. point, we had four strikers at the club when Chicharito was there. Yeah. You know, and even if they're average, we just need someone to be able to come on and give Antonio some respite late in the game. And everyone knows that we needed another centre half. And now it's come back to Hornels. That's so it. I just think it wasn't too much to ask a bloody central defender and a striker as backup. The, the, the thing about that, though, Dave, is that we, we, in the past, what we've had is we've had Sullivan, 
running his team of agents. Yeah, he, he's got his favourite agents, and 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 they would bring players to him. And Sullivan would go, "Fuck it, I'll bring him in." And, and I know this is the Davy special. We used to call it the Sully special. You know, I'm bringing these players in, and he did it at the start, even under Zola, when he brought in like Elan and and Mido. Yeah. You know, they were players that that Zola hadn't asked for. You know, to yeah. be fair, Zola did ask for Benny McCarthy, though. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so so his judgment and that great, yeah. But you know, Sully and whatever. The thing about the fans is, we for ages said to him, "Can you stop it playing Champions Shit Manager on your computer for for with real with a real football club? Stop it." You know, leave yeah. it to the professionals. What yeah. we've done now is we've got a system where we're leaving it to David Moyes. The problem is, you know, Moyes is a cautious... January's never a great time to, no. to pick up top players. And Moyes is a cautious... I, look, personally, I think the excuse he made about I couldn't find anyone to come into the first team because you That's can right. reinforce the bench. And, yeah, and, and that, that's that for me. Is, he should have looked around and thought, can I get better players that I've got sitting there? Yes, you can. And you reinforce the bench to have... Because when you do lose around. your first 11, yeah. there's better coming on. And how and Aaron, 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 Aaron uncomfortable was his public apology? And he's, he, he, oh, he's, he's that was cringe. As well. Well, yeah. It was bad, wasn't it? It was yeah. bad. But can, I, can I just say something, though? Against Burnley, when that big lump, what's his name? Vigorst, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Vigorst. Yeah. When, when he scored the goal, which is only his second goal since he's arrived, right? Some, yeah. bloke, some bloke behind me went mental. I told you we should have got him in January. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I would have signed him for ten million for ten in January. Yeah. I'd have signed him for I ten know, million. But he was he was he was trying to allude to the fact that the guy had scored from a yard. Oh, he couldn't no, miss no, the. No. Yeah. You know, can someone, brilliant can someone years, tell but... me why we let Haller go? I still yeah. don't understand but without, it. Without 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 having a, without having someone else, or at least without getting his replacement in, no, it didn't make any sense. No, I, t- I tell you, you could tell Alla. Alla didn't fit in with the way that Moyes wanted to play. Moyes wants to play with the fast counter attacking on the break. Yeah, but Alla was not like that. I think what happened is Alla was brought in by Pellegrini. He was probably sold a dream. You know, <laughs> bought a lie, and and yeah. you know, Pellegrini is dispatched, and he he just doesn't see any future. He was playing for Ryan Track Frankfurt when they finished top four and were going to go Champions League. Yeah, that's when he was playing for Frankfurt. Yeah, exactly. and then he's come to West Ham and it ain't happened, is it? And then he nah. thinks, I want to go out. The, 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 the problem with West Ham is at two biggest signings we've ever paid are, are Anderson and Haller. And if you look at the recoup that we've got back on them, as, as they mm. were saying, you know, the, it's one thing to sell. The reason for selling him, I'm, I believe as well, the reason I thought for selling him for 20 million was to give him tw- to give us 20 million pound to buy a replacement. Yeah, I guess yeah. That's what and this is where... I, I think Moyes could have made him work as, as a backup, but I guess he wouldn't have been happy to do that. But I, 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 I'm sure. You know, I'm imagine sure if we had him now coming off the bench. Well, he got a couple of goals coming off the bench. He and when he, he went after the first, so the, the that last that part of the season that was locked down. So, what did we we stopped playing in the March, and we had, we had nine games. I think Anna come on and got a couple of goals when we yeah. restarted in the May. Yeah, but you uh, know, um, go on, go on, Nudge. No, so I, I think in what Dave's saying is, if it's, it's all right if you sell him and buy a replacement, that's good. But to sell him and not get a replacement, that's, that was the unacceptable yeah. thing. That's, that, was, that was bad. I don't know about unacceptable. It was I unacceptable. It, I don't call it unacceptable. Just, just quickly, it was unacceptable. Just, 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 just quickly though, before we move on to Gary's second news item, because we need to go on to that in a minute. Just, 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 <laughs> no, just, no, just no, 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 no. Just, just very quickly. You said, like David said, I'm sure Moyes could have got Haller, you know, working harder than that. He obviously couldn't because when I watched that Jake Humphrey thing that Moyes did recently, Nigel, I know yeah. you saw it as well. Yeah. And he said, he basically went, when we had Arnautovic, he basically said to Arnautovic, look, you've got to run around more. And what mm. happened? Arnautovic started running around more. So it wasn't rocket science the way he got Arnautovic working harder. Mm. He just said, if you want to be a fan's favourite, you've got to work harder. And he yeah. did it. 
I'm sure he would have tried the same with Haller. So for me, yeah. a little bit of me questions Haller's aptitude yeah. to work harder. That's all I would say. That's all maybe, I would say. Maybe, maybe John, yeah. maybe you're right. Maybe. You know I mean? But I anyway, think, um, I think I was seduced by the overhead kick he scored. Yeah. Oh, yeah. beautiful thing, wasn't it? Beautiful thing. So let, let me um let me, this next story ain't gonna take long. <clears throat> Not as long as that one. Um <laughs> anyway, um I'm gonna come to you on this, Nige, uh when I eventually oh, get there. So here we go. The gravy train. Oof. It's back on. So on Wednesday this week, you over confirmed changes to the Champions League format for 2024-25. They agreed to proposals from the European Club Association, which is basically all the big clubs have got all the power, um, um, and the UEFA Club Committee. New proposals are expected to be finally ratified on May the 10th. They've taken a slightly different shape to the ones that were released a few weeks ago. So it had been suggested back then that clubs with a superior 10-year coefficient, and so for you, David, coefficient is what you earn in terms of bonus points for every game that you play and win that you have and everything else. You collect it throughout the season. And then, you know, so basically what 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 the, the big clubs were saying was, even if we don't qualify for the Champions League, we want you to look at our record for the last 10 years and we should qualify for the Champions League. That's what they were saying. In order to jump over teams, so say West Ham finished fourth and Arsenal finished fifth, they shouldn't let us get into the Champions League. They should let Arsenal qualify because they've got a better 10-year history or coefficient score. That was what it was supposed to be like. So anyway, the latest agreement is that the Champions League will be open to 36 club rather than the current 32. That was as it as it was proposed a few weeks ago. And um, there is still a chance of... They've, they've kind of changed it around. So it's not based on 10 years. It's now going to be based on five years. And also, it's not based on the per country. It's across them all. So there's an additional four positions available. Two of those positions won't be available to the likes of, you know, our our, our greedy six with massive coefficients. Um, there are two places that will be available. So, and, and, and that will be the clubs across Europe with the highest coefficient for the last five years if they qualify for the Champions League qualification phase or the Europa League or the Europa Conference League. So that means they have to actually qualify for one of the competitions in order to get that additional place. So now they won't be leapfrogging the likes of West Ham. If West Ham finished fourth, they would be getting an additional place. So that, the proposal has changed. It's changed that dramatically from what the greedy six and their mates asked for. But does it mean the dangerous past? And, um, well, no, it doesn't because... Ronan Evane, the Executive Director of Football Supporters Europe, he says what I think, basically, and that is the risk of this reform is that it's progressive. It's opening the door to coefficient seats now, and then God knows what happens in four years' time. It's death by a thousand cuts. This has been the strategy of the big clubs for years. Get a little bit of terrain progressively and, um, and build from there. And he's absolutely right. If UEFA start giving, even though it's only two places across the whole of UEFA, they're actually setting a precedent by let, by allowing people to qualify through the coefficient. And what that's going to do is open the door to the Super League thing, the Super League concept, yeah. eventually, where the big clubs get a guaranteed ticket aboard the gravy train. So to me, this is bloody scandalous and it shouldn't be allowed and UEFA shouldn't ratify these rules. What do you think, Nigel? Look, there's, there's a strange thing. British football, and it's tied in there as well. You could look at the uh, Chelsea's new ownership, possibly, in the the, the people buying clubs now uh, seem to be American. Yeah, and and the thing about it, these are American people that own American sports franchises already. So in America, we all know no such thing as relegation. Yeah. So they don't have that, and this is the thing. And the, 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 there's none of this. Clubs get the money from fans, from TV. They distribute it evenly, and they have a draft system. So they they know the circle that they're in, and they've done that in football. So if you look at the MLS, it's the same basic yeah. way. They can nominate these foreign players that they can bring in, pay bigger wages, but then the rest of it. It's, it's all paired back with wage constructs and everything else. If Chelsea become owned now by Americans, as it looks like, we've already got Man United owned by Americans, Liverpool are owned by Americans, you know, yeah. Arsenal owned by Americans, Chelsea then owned by Americans. Yeah. 
You know, so what we're getting is a carve up between Arabs and Americans. Yeah. It's quite possible that that in ten years' time, you know, the Super League, the Super League people um, are, are still not officially come out and said it's dead. So yeah. it's still Barcelona. I think it's Barcelona, Real Madrid, and um, it was one other team. I don't know if it was um, Spurs. No, I don't know if it was in. All the British teams pulled out. I think it was what yeah, I've been exactly. Juve, actually, to be honest. Um, never officially pulled out. Never said it was dead. Um, UEFA, they won a court case in Spain in against UEFA. Yeah. And, and where, where is the law that says you will have to play football under the UEFA banner? And, and, and this is the thing. As football clubs become businesses, is it a restriction of business? Mm. The, the, the changes to this, the Champions League, look like a direct doffing of the cow towing to the yeah. European clubs. Let's get this right. They all, <coughs> the big clubs have set up their own European super club um, meeting that takes place. Yeah. Uh, the, all, the, all, the, all the British clubs are still in it, despite yeah. signing up to join this. Apparently, it's now come out that legally... The clubs couldn't withdraw. The only club I think that could that had to withdraw, it was one club that said they would ha- they would withdraw if their sponsors didn't agree to it. So they're out. So all the other clubs that signed up for it legally yeah. couldn't withdraw. Wow. So it's just sitting on a back burner there. If you go on that Super League website, you still see quotes from the Man United chairman. Yeah, it's not been That's taken amazing. down. No. They need yeah. this, this coefficient thing is just the backdoor version of it. Yeah, and I, it, yeah. And it, I it, hate it. You ain't for it. Gonna absolutely be, is. Th- th- there comes a point when football fans, you've got the Football Supporters Association, that ties into the European supporter fan bloke that you said. There comes a point when, why is football played? Is it is it for us? What is, what is the point of football? Because I thought football was played for the fans. Yeah, that, that that was the reason the game was played. That actually that we were the important bit, but obviously money's now the important bit. Yeah. We are just secondary, and at yeah. some point fans have to turn around and say enough is enough. I've said it to you boys, you know, let them go. Let yeah, them I, I, go. I completely. Uh, when oh, that when that super yeah. thing was being floated, that was my opinion. Just let yes, them go, and we'll see, crack on. Where like, like, like Kerry, like and Kerry we'll be, Packers, we'll be in the UEFA Champions League every season. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like yeah. Kerry yeah. Packers yeah, yeah. cricket Absolutely. circus tour. Yeah, yeah, that, that was good for one year, and in. Well, that's the thing. The, the, be- but- the beauty of football is it's competitive. It is traditionally a working class sport. I think I think that is the thing we've all got in common with other European countries. We all think about football in the same way. The Americans don't think about it like that. All, all, I- but the thing is, Gary, all like all, all, all European countries, they've all, they've all got that that pyramid, haven't they? They've all got the same the same type yeah. of thing where. Any anybody, you know, uh, any any team can kind of work their way up with the right in merit. Yeah, sporting merit. You, you can do that. And that's what's beautiful about the game. And, and you know what? Man United, if it all goes wrong for them, they can end up in the bottom tier. Well, you know? there, was a, there was a funny it, thing it's... about Man United uh, 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 today in, in regards to that Super League. was It was written into the Super League that there'd be a pot of money for facilities upgrade. Now, yeah. Man United Stadium's just been panned. Man United Stadium don't even meet a UEFA Category 4 stadium no more. They can't hold a European final anymore. Wow. Oh, really? Because the facilities have been deemed that bad. Man United, no, they need to spend money on their stadium to upgrade the facilities to get it yeah. back to, to to the you know to be the state you know the theatre of dreams. But hold up, you can't even have the you you know they could not hold the UEFA Cup final like they did ten no. years ago they when Rangers that. turned up. Yeah. No, because because the facilities are so poor. So they're looking at to spend money to upgrade the stadium. Of course, you've got the problem is the Glazers are taking money out. They've never put a penny in. They've only no. ever took out. They've got to build this new team. They've got to try and build it in three years. Where are they getting the money from? That's, you know, they were looking at the yeah. Super League. But it's, yeah. it's getting rid of, it's getting rid of uh, all of these players as well. T- talking about Man United, I mean, Eric Ten, ha- Ten Hag, great manager, really good manager, but... He's coming from Ajax, right? Ajax, um, yeah, they're they're the, they're the biggest team in not 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 the best league in the world. They're not, 
Um, and he, he, but he plays with young, hungry, up-and-coming players that once they get to a certain level, they get sold on. He's, he's no doubt in his, his ability as a manager, but he's going to a club that basically buy players. They did this, they're like Ronaldo. They buy players for shirt sales and they will continue doing it. Man United, they're all about, it's, it's corporate first, football later. And I don't care what anyone says, they will continue doing that. If, you know, you can't tell me Solskjaer wanted Ronaldo. No. No, no but I, t- I said, I was telling someone, I don't know who it was, I said, the thing about Ronaldo, he was going to go to Man City. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Ferguson that picked up the phone and turned around and went to him, you cannot play for that team. You are us. Yeah. You have to join us. And he joined Man United because, and and that's the funny thing about it. All these people complaining about Ronaldo playing for Man United, he'd have been happy to play for Man City. Right, he would have been, yeah. 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 That's an interesting. You that's want interesting. It, it, your club brought him there. You got no right to complain. The depressing thing comment. about football is, though, there is no loyalty anymore. No, you know, no not anymore. That's what I hate about it. You know, and when you and when you do see all the West Ham fans traveling abroad. You know, and it's it's not been cheap. I've got to be honest with you. I've spent mm. a bloody fortune, and I wouldn't be able to do that every season. No. But, you know, somewhere down the line, the fans have got to be taken into consideration in yeah. terms of that, of what we can afford. But, and... but look, but look, but look what Glenn says here. Is, is there some relevance to that? Lockdown showed that fans are not needed. Is there any yeah. truth in that? Yeah, of course. It yeah, yeah exactly. So. Exactly. I so. yeah. Well, I don't know. I think a lot of the players said it was shit without the fans, didn't they? Well, th- this is yeah. the thing, and this is where it comes back to what I was saying: is what is the point of football? What is the package? Because while fo- while lockdown showed that fans were not needed, actually, though, what it highlighted is the importance of fans. Yeah, right. because the games were sterile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got yeah. we got it was yeah. better than nothing. We got used yeah. to watching it. But, but Jesus Christ, how quick were we to get back over there? Yeah. And part of the beauty of football is the fans, is the noise that, you know, and the Leon fans, you know, the, the, the writing, you know, the, the animosity, the tension, everything that goes into it. You know, there's, there's nothing like standing on a seg line, just hurling uh, abuse at the people for 90 minutes, like <laughs> 20 <laughs> yards to your right. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, no, but that is football, I know. isn't it? I know, and, it is. And, and, and that is what the TV companies wanted when they yeah. set up the Premier League. But, you know, but, but, but you know the Italian League, is it me of I thought, I, I remember the Italian League for years, they don't fill stadiums, have they? No, and they haven't done for years in Italy. No, but it's, uh, partly, funny enough, due to the, due to the, the violence problems that the Italian fans never really travelled, but those yeah. that did would, would, would you know, uh, I've Exciting. watched football in Italy. Oh, I, went, know, I, went, I would went, never do it know, again. You know what I've noticed yeah. about us in Europe this year? It's been quite disappointing the amount of way fans that actually have travelled to us in general. Yeah, but you it's know. a British thing, John, and th- and th- and this is a yes. thing I think we we've never really seen it. The, the, the away fan traveling is a British thing. Yeah. 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 It's not. Oh, well, I, I think German fans do it as well. Yeah. German yeah. fans. Well, I went, yeah. I went so to... Our football's more aligned, actually, with the Bundesliga than it is. Yeah. If you go to Spain, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. And, and see, I bet they, they, you don't see big away supports. Mate, when I went to AC Milan last week, the other week, they played yeah. Bologna. There must have been 100 Bologna fans. And you're just thinking. You know, yeah. this is a big game. You think, wow, but yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think away day traveling is very much a British thing, generally. Mm. You yeah. know, the rest of Europe don't seem to do it. My son was even asking me when Leon played in the first leg at our stadium. You know, they only had the upper tier little section. Yeah. He, he yeah. thought they'd fill up the whole lot. He couldn't believe it, and I had to explain to him that I just think that it's a very British thing to go to away games and sell yeah. out pretty much. You know, so all right. Oh, we quizzing. Yeah, you get on with a quiz. Come on, then. Right. We'll give it a couple of minutes. You on, Nige? Uh, I'll let you guess. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, dear. I've got to be beaten. I think this is the week I lose. 
<laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> well, it depends if Nick's thrown in and he only falls and horses questions like last time he did. No, yeah, but I still won that week. They're, they're all West Ham. They're all West Ham mm. this time. Okay. Even though last time there was someone who got 100% like me. So it was literally... There was. There was. It's speed, though. It's speed, though, you yeah. answer as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Who we got in? Freshfielder, Gary, it's Tony F, Ariola, Selsden Hammer, out of Turner, Geordie Hammer, out of Turner, Perla, Virgil, that's me. Numero Uno. Where's you, Nick? Where's Gal? Oh, Gary. Gary's Gary. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting, so... Uh, oh, yeah, of course. I don't have to get humiliated. <laughs> 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 yeah, he writes the questions and still get beat. That would be... Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, who's Cam- who's- ah, Dave, are you Camden Irons? Right. I'm going to go ten, 10 seconds and we're going to start. 10, on, 9, 8, 7, 6... Five, four, three, two, one. Fifty fucking licenses, and all I've got is twelve people. Seriously, it's better than it's last time. Like, it's quality, not quantity. That's it. That's yeah. it. Right here we go. The Nigel and David quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel's got a memory like a. Spin. Right, West Ham signed Joe Hart on loan in 2017-18. Which Italian team was he on loan with? In the previous season, Torino, Atalanta, Udinese, or Genoa. Do we shout out the answers? No, you've no. got to press the you got to press the button. I am pressing it, and nothing's happening. Well, you have you downloaded the, the, the app, David? He downloaded the app. He's pressing I downloaded the app. The the app. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. That's fine. <laughs> well, I got it right anyway. <laughs> Don't tell us. <laughs> I've got zero. Right. Next. Did you tell me I had to download an app? <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. Cheers for that. You obviously didn't want me to play, did you? <laughs> Nigel said, "Don't tell him he'll beat me." That's what Nigel yeah. said. Right. So, what? who's numero uno? Is that is that Nigel, you, Nigel? Nigel. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> Knock him off his pedestal, someone. <laughs> right. Here we go. Right, which European team did West Ham play in a friendly at the Houston Aerodrome in 1966-67? Athletic yeah. Madrid, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, or FC Utrecht? These are horrible questions. That's a horrible one. I know what I would guess, though. It's quite it's quite a um, a unique game, though, isn't it? I think it was the first game in the stadium. I think they opened it. Yeah, it's quite a unique game. Oh, I've got go. it right. I've got it right. Yay. <laughs> I thought that Try to go European centric. Apart from this one, what's Julian Dix's middle name? A- Aaron this. Tarquin, Andrew, <laughs> or Anthony? Oh my God, Tarquin! <laughs> that is your name. You use that all the time. Nick. I must admit, I don't know this one. I if guess. it's Tarquin, I'm never going to look at him in the same way again. <laughs> oh, Terminator! <laughs> Tarquin the Terminator. Oh, yes. uh, okay, that makes more sense. Oh, Virgil's moved in front. Right, next one. Four or 15. Which team did we sign Bernard Lama from on loan in 1997, 1998? Toulouse, Marseille, PSG or Montpellier? I know this one. Was it Lama or Lima? It was Lama. It's Lama. Lama. He spelled it wrong. It was two L's I thought as well. Lama, Lama. Lama. (laughs) I took a guess here. I was was in in a hurry. Sorry. Oh, oh, got it right. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting battered. Oh, he's back in front. <laughs> <laughs> Which Italian team knocked us out of the UEFA Cup in 2006? I know this one. Oh, we know that one, don't we? Yeah, Torino all day. <laughs> Looks like you, Nick. Pavarotti. <laughs> Things the same as well. Same sort of voice. Len said, Len said you look like yeah. just Every set. Every set. Yeah. Not, Not like in that anymore. picture, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everyone got that right. Yeah. There we go. Right. Who scored more penalties for West Ham is a good one. Hurst or Decanio? Oh, bloody oh, hell. Oh. <laughs> I know which way I would guess. That's a good one, that is. Yeah, that's a guess, though, isn't it, for me? I think, yeah. Yeah, I bet it's like uh, there's about two between them or something. Nick, is that your under thirteen team in training, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you've got it right. Yeah, that's what. Here we go. 
Right, which Sames Academy did Mark Noble represent before he joined this. West Ham? I know, I know this. this. I don't know this. I know you this. not? Because mm. he, he's, cut, he's cut all ties with Noble, and he? he don't do nothing with Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Just give up on him. He's wiped him from his memory. At least I think I know it. <laughs> Positive. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. Do you want to open it? Someone's using Alexa to get the answers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right, which Belgian side did West Ham beat in the oh, first shit. round of the 64-65 Cup Winners' Cup? Oh, I don't know this one. Nick, Stand of the age, so Royal me. Antwerp, and elect or Ghent? 64-65. No idea. Well, if it's... Well, I'll be wrong. Yes, yes. If it's Ghent, it really is history repeating itself. To You're just trying to beat Nigel. That's all this is. Sorry for the questions, everyone. Yeah, it is. Uh, Did you get that, Nigel? Go. So that's another good omen that we've beaten. He got it. Yeah, he got it. Look. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Fuck's sake. Oh, my God. He's pissing the head. Right. Who scored both goals in the final of the victorious 1965 Cup Winners' well, Cup this final? One. Well, Every this West Ham fan. Well, be more Jeff first. You know I dear. think it's right. his birthday today. Is it? Is it today? I don't know. I'd have to double check. I saw something about it. Also, his his nephew played for us, didn't he? The the late. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if his nephew or cousin, but yeah. Nephew, wasn't it? I'd, it may have been cousin. Who's his cousin? Well, we're gonna find uh, out in a bit. It is his birthday, twenty second of April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Les Seeley was he was related to oh, Les. Les, of course. Right, yeah, which yeah, of yeah. these still active hammers scored a goal in Europe first? Lanzini, Antonio, Noble or Cresswell? Which of these still active hammers scored a goal in Europe? Oh, scored a goal in Europe first. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think I know this. Well, I'll just pretend I do anyway. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know this. <laughs> I'm sorry, David. It's all right, mate. I know, I know which way the winds blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Antonio, so it was this season. Nobody I, got it right. <laughs> I, I, would have, I would have guessed Lanzini. Oh. Oh, said Lanzini as well. Right, yeah. How is Les Ferdinand related to Rio and Anton? Uncle, cousin, stepbrother, or <laughs> milkman? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely milkman. You could have got one of him playing for West Ham. I know Nick, you amateur. Isn't it? I was in a hurry. Oh, I wouldn't have to go to the office. Oh. All right. Oh, this is pissing me off now. Still at the top, right? Right, what relation was Les Seeley to Alan Seeley? There yeah, we go. It's, it's, not, it's, not, son. it's not, I'm What's telling you, it's that. Son. <laughs> son. <laughs> no one's catching Nigel. I've got, to, I've got to just answer quickly, I think. That's the thing, I don't answer quick enough. Yes. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. Right, two, three questions. Who is this former hammer? Oh, is it a reveal? Make sure you show their head, wouldn't you, this time? Oh. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, I know those. That's an unusual image you've got of him, though. He don't usually have hair like that. He's got an arm missing. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Get right, Nige? No. Yes! Ooh! Oh. And did not look like Garcia to me. No, because he had that's the first because he had no air. Where was his air? Yeah, he, he had, had no arms at one point. So all right, two questions left. Craig, what is oh, Craig? Well, this is a fake one, by the way. Is massive, it John Gary, yeah. Nick, or Braveheart? Be quick. His name's massive. This is probably an unfair one. How the fuck is this? Was at a request of John, by the way. This one. <laughs> What is it? Is this true? His middle name? No, no, it's not. It's not true. He hasn't what? got a middle name. But we've re we've given him a middle name. <laughs> yes. right. oh, fucking bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking stitch. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that is a stitch. <laughs> oh. You would. Oh. In the grand seven, West Ham bought Nigel Quasi, but from which club? West Brom, Southampton, Portsmouth, or Notts County? <laughs> Oh, fuck I think I've just got that wrong. Or have I? He played for all them. The last um, one. I'll just guess that one. I think I know where it is. 
Ah, ah correct, wrong. Yeah. Who's third? I come third. Oh. Yay. Oh. I always come third. Oh, no, oh, Norwich. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Nigel's livid. <laughs> He's incandescent with rage. Nigel, did you lose because of that dodgy question? I think no, I did. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he, didn't did. Get, he didn't get Richard. He didn't get Garcia either. So, ah, oh, right. <laughs> I got a few. Wrong. That is the biggest stitch up I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't. With, with I still it. don't think that's right about Liz Seeley and and Alan what, Seeley. Nephew. No, I don't think he was nephews. Where did you get that from? Online. Online? Yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia. Oh, no, I, didn't. I didn't. I didn't get it from Wikipedia. I didn't get it from Wikipedia. I didn't. So, lads, I'm afraid my time is done because I've no just problem. had, a, no I've problem, had an audition David. coming from America, which I've got to do this weekend. So I've now got to go and learn lines. So no, I've got to Yeah, no worries, mate. It's it's thanks for joining, Dave. It's, it's been, been fantastic. Been Thank you for asking me again. No worries. And uh, I will listen to the rest of it when you when are you releasing this? Oh, no, it's just live. After. It's, it's live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're live. You're not doing a big. You're not doing a premiere at the. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. The Odeon no. Leicester Square. We don't, we don't, we don't do podcasts. Topic. That's for old fogies, mate. We do. Uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> all right <laughs> lads. Listen, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Cheers, Nigel. Thanks. Good luck with the audition, that mate. Cheers, David. Good Cheers, Dave. Thanks, mate. Oh, mate. See you, See you later. later. <laughs> See you later. Oh, you're still in, Nigel. Sorry. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, fucking robbers. <laughs> fucking <brave laughs> up. He's fuming. Look at him. Look. What, and which one did you choose out of Gary, Nick, and John? I thought, I thought oh, you're probably going to go fucking John because he's in love with yeah. you. <laughs> 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 fucking. I'm looking at Braveheart thinking. I'm, you know, when you look at you, you think you just stitched me. Fucking, yeah. I'm, I'm looking, right? Because I'm telling you, I don't think Les Seeley was, was, um, I don't think Les Seeley was nephew. Alan Seeley. Um, Mate. I don't know. I've, I've <laughs> never heard that they were uncle. Just because so, you ain't heard it, don't mean it ain't right, Nigel. No, but I, it was uh, it was always um, I thought no, it's, it's on, yeah, it's on Wikipedia. It says Leslie 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 Jesse Seeley was an English professional. He was nephew of Alan Seeley. Yeah, oh, I, I found it as well. I found it as well, Gareth. Yeah. yeah. So Nigel's been beat by me and Wikipedia tonight. What a <laughs> yeah. It was a dodgy well, result, Nigel. It was a dodgy result. Looking back from it, mate. Sleep, just because right? this fucking book, right, happens to be sitting next to me, yeah, that has got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll tell you what we do. Have, have a little chat for a minute, rather than going into a Chelsea. Because if we're going on, rather than getting into a Chelsea preview. Uh, we're yeah. going to talk about how we think we're going to line up at the weekend. So let me just get the predictor up. The, uh, yeah, let's do that. Have, 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 a, have a chat for a minute. Have a, and I'll, a, pra I'll a practical out. session. Oh, Nigel, yeah. Nigel, there's a bit of a question here. Um, Nigel, is that a photo of John celebrating <laughs> over your left shoulder? Is that a photo of me celebrating the Queen's <laughs> <over your> <laughs> oh, That's, a, like, that's, a, that's a real legend of West The King has been proper stitched up. They fucking they, they tune in to watch me win. Fucking they tune in to watch you lose. Oh, tonight. Fucking hell. And I'm the dear, one that's done oh, it. Dear. But there he people. is. There's John. There's John just above Nigel's left shoulder there with his arms up in the air. Look. That is Trevor Brookin. <laughs> Can I just point that out? There's nothing like him. him. Yeah. Trevor's got a medium shirt on. Um Excuse oh. me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've lost I've lost four pounds this week, thank you. Yeah, all oh, right. Would, would you well, if you look down the back of the sofa, you might find hey, it. <laughs> What a right. Okay. Fabianski is going to play this weekend, isn't he? Yeah, Fabianski yeah. is back. Are you putting it on the screen? Yeah, I'm trying. Hang on. Oh, you're doing the. You have to load the names first, don't you? No, I've done that. Are you up? I can, I can load more. But um, right here, we've got the moment. So, what do we think that we're going to see at the weekend? Do you Mate, think. I have no idea. 
Are we going to see it back? Are we going to see it back three or a back four? I don't one second. Go one, back four. One, one second. Kieran's asked for VAR over that quiz Fucking result. Right. <laughs> Kieran's in Australia. <laughs> don't worry about Kieran. He'll wake up. He won't know what day of the week is in a minute. He's not good as I am. Right. Well, look, let's. I'll tell you what. Then, if we're going to go over back four, let's have our first debate of the night. Who's going to go right back? Fredericks. That's what I think. I think. I think so as well. Is this for Chelsea? Yeah. 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 I, I think so. Yeah. I think it'd be Fredericks. And it's going to be Dawson, obviously. Yeah. It just has to be. I, I, I don't think he'll do Rice or anything like that. You don't think so? I don't think he will, no. So you think Rice is going to be um, central? Do you think he's I going think to he literally... Might. Do you think he's going to play the full... Do you, do you think he's going to play the first team? Well, just yeah. because he's just... I, I know it's a bit different now, you could say, but he's never changed it much before. No. And I just can't see him... I don't know, all of a sudden changing it that drastically, really. I genuinely can't, you know. Right, um, so left is obviously going to be Cresswell. No brainer. So who's gonna who's gonna play next to Dalton? Well, uh, do you know what? Mm, I was thinking Creswell in the center. In the center and then Johnson. Really? Mm. Ain't that two ain't that two square pegs then? Because you've got Johnson who's not a real left back and no, got but, Cresswell who's not but, a centre back. When he plays three the three centre backs at the back, he was playing Criswell as true. the left sided of the three. Yeah, yeah, very true. He okay. was. He was. I've, I've seen a few people talk about it. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I think Johnson is absolutely brilliant at left back as well. He's mm. really solid, isn't he? Well, I don't know about brilliant, but he's, he's, he's been. No, no, been look good. at what he did against Leon. He was fantastic that night. Yeah. Um. Okay, so. I think, I think Ben Rama could be getting a run out for this one. Yeah, what? on the left, central. Uh, one of them. Okay, let's just put him on there. It's four now's playing, or is he on the bench? Mm. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a I'd tough put... one because he, I, I, it's almost like he does. He saves four now's for the European game. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's his one. You know, he's, he's one sort of sop where you think, oh, I'll give him a rest. I could, should, I could, should we, I could, rather than second guessing what we think Moyes would do, because that's a bit boring, should we put up what we think he should do? Well, I've done that. I mean, for me, I would go Rice at the back. I don't know. I'd have Yarmolenko up front, definitely starting. What is this? Is against, this is against Chelsea, yeah? Yeah, I'd yeah. have Yarmolenko starting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I'd go Yarmolenko up front. Yeah, I'd go with Vlasic on one side. Ben Rama on the other. That's good enough. I would go Vlasic in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be nice to see, wouldn't it, for once? I'd go Vlasic in the middle, just to try him out. Give ben him Rama a rest. on the left. Um, and I would play Ben Rama. Ben Rama on the left, Bowen on the right. He'd be all right to play two games. He'd be fine. <clears throat> I mean, the only thing you could do is yeah. Fredericks and Soufal. Yeah, that's La La Land, isn't it? Oh, no, you could do, actually. You could do that. Yeah, Soufal. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Obviously, that's Bowen's Bowen's the goal scoring threat at the moment. I and and mm. I just I yeah, what, about it? What, what, depends, what about this? It depends uh, what Moyes sees in this game. What is Moyes? If Moyes yeah. is thinking, we don't know what he's thinking. Do we? If Moyes is going to go right all in, all right, in okay, society, that's fine. Let's put look, it. Sean's let's asked why no debate, Alicia. Right. Yeah, let's bring Alicia in. Yeah. I think, I I'll, I'll tell you why I think there's no debate because if you if we're going to second guess him, we we can only look at what he's done in the past. And if he's not done it in the past, yeah, I can't see him doing it now. I agree. No. Yeah, I agree. that's why I can't past, see yeah. Elise Elise coming in. I, he, he will he will put a round peg in a square hole to try and get his way because he wants to keep a formation. This is. And that's, that's the formation. What players he puts where, I don't know, but I can't see him wanting, especially... You, you got that there. Look, Nigel, look, at least he played tonight, so not looking like yeah, he's going to give him a chance. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah, if yeah. He's, yeah, he's played with the yeah. other 21s. It's a, bit, it's, a bit, it's a bit similar when people say he might start Crow. It's the same scenario. He could have played him a long time before now, and he hasn't. And I just... Yeah, you know, I FA Cup didn't. games he didn't put him on. You know, no, he, he didn't. At the time, he could have given him a go. He didn't. Yeah. There was yeah. lesser games where you thought he would put Crow in, and he never yeah. did. So what? Uh, and it, it, it and, and let, let's look at it right. You know, 
we're coming to the business end of the season. We've got yeah. five Premier League games left, possibly three in Europe, possibly. Yeah. So there's only eight games left. You know, I, he, he's not been a risk taker all season. No. I can't see him starting now. He no. will stick to tried and tested. I, I mean, if it was me, obviously, <coughs> look, I'm not a fucking Premier League manager. But if if it was me, I would absolutely slot him in just to just 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 to see how he fares because he's the it's most. Not even, of the... Nick, it's not even that for me. Nick, you're saving important players from injuries. That's what I mean. It's not even to see how he will do. To me, it's about say. I know Nigel's right. We're at the business end of the season, but more importantly, we're at the business end of the Europa yeah. League, right? And yeah. at the end of the day, no. Got- and I'll tell you why. And I, 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 at the end of the day, yeah. And and this mm-hmm. is the crux of it, yeah. Yeah. I think if 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 it was we were guaranteed seventh, so say Wolves weren't hanging on our coattails, yeah. If we were guaranteed seventh, I could see him doing it, yeah, because seventh gives you European football, and I and I, and I do believe as a club we would be more than happy to go into the Europa Conference League. Yeah, I do believe as a club, we, yeah, because it's European competition, and it's it's nigh on rare that I, I can't try to think of when we've. I don't think we've ever qualified for Europe two years running by our league position. No, yeah. Never yeah. been done. So again, that's another feather in the cap of, of the people that run the club. More is the lot that they can point to. Well, West Ham in their past has never done this. So we're breaking new ground. We're creating history. That's what Moyes said, wasn't it? I think I want to create yeah. history, and I sort of laughed at him. Um, so and and therefore I just can't see anything like that happening. No, but, I'm not saying um, it will. I'm not saying it will. But well, I, I must admit, if I was a gambling man, if and if it was me, yeah, I wouldn't be putting Elise in. I'm sorry, I just, I just can't do that again against Norwich. I might, yeah, but mm. I ain't doing it against Chelsea. No, I'm not. No, because you don't want to be embarrassed at the moment. Our goal difference is good, and it could yeah. be there. And he's, he says Chelsea there for taking and, and whatever. You know, we we, we he. he he, he will see it, even if he can get a point out of this game. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's just because our goal difference is good. Yeah, we've got to keep Wolves away. Wolves have got a tough game, I think. Yeah, no, but, they yeah, haven't. They've, they've got the other, the other, the other, oh, the other yeah. Oh, the other well, there you go, then. Oh, well, yeah, but yeah. Nigel, the other thing, the other thing, a little bit to me is, is that the league is not in our hands as much as Europe is. What I mean by that is. A lot of the teams in the league still have games in hand over us, right? So, in a way, it's out of our hands because you no, know, but they seven fine. That, and this yeah, is the but... thing, and 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 this is what I'm saying is he will look at it as collecting points. So, if you look at it, you go like you'd like to think we got two bankers, wouldn't you? With um, Norwich yeah. and oh, I don't know, two bankers. Well, you'd like um, to think so, but Norwich ain't. Yeah, we ain't. Playing you know, we'd well, like to think Norwich is a banker. I didn't again. I'm thinking the other one's Brighton, but of course that ain't a banker, is it? No, yeah. No. So um, I mean, and then we're looking at Man City, Arsenal, and yeah. who's the other game we got? Oh, well, obviously Chelsea. Oh, Brighton. So Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. Well, yeah. That, that, um, by the way, by the way, that Burnley against Wolves tomorrow. Burnley won last last night, night before. So yeah. Um, Everton are away to Liverpool on Sunday, yeah. so they'll probably yeah. lose. If Burnley beat Wolves at home, because they're on a rich reign of form, I think they discovered their form against us last week, mm. they yeah. go up, they go above Everton. Everton going to the bottom three. Mm. So, so that's and, not an and, easy and game for Wolves. There's a mad stat. I think uh, the Everton have, have only played in their entire history three seasons outside mm. top flight. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. The entire history, just three seasons. That's so they've, they've never been relegated from the top flight. So was that before they got into the no, top they, flight? They have been relegated from the top. Have flight. they? When? I didn't think they had. They've not been yeah. relegated from the Premier uh, League from the from the fifties in the fifties. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Ah. Well, well, so look, if, late forties, they went down and came back early fifties. Ah, right. I mean, for me, for me, like I say, all all of my chips. I should consult would, my book. All of my chips would be stacked against the um, the, the Europa League now. It, for, for me, um, that is cer- certainly with with the two Frankfurt games, so Arsenal and Chelsea, they can fuck off. To be honest, we can't. I I, I wouldn't. 
even if we play our first team in that game, they're not going to be playing a hundred percent. They're going to be they're going to be in training training ground mode. They they, they won't be busting the gut. I don't think. Mm, um, I think so. So 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 what what do you think in in terms of that then if if the Premier League season is in our mindset is if if we're going for for Europa League do you do you start playing Ariola or do you stick with Fabianski for what for, no no in the league just 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 throw Ariola in now because Ariola well, well, Ariola is a better keeper but why change it now what's happened what do you mean why why change it well, well, if the league's saying, not if the league's not important why bother. Well, why not? I mean, the keeper ain't going to get tired. He can play two games in, in four days. No, I'm not saying for that reason, but I just, yeah. yeah, I can see what you're saying just to get in more game time. Yeah. So, to answer the question, uh, Sean says, uh, uh, says about Everton being relegated. This was just before yeah. we came up in 1958. That's, uh, that's good. Cheers, Sean. Cheers, Sean. All right, so so what do we think? Are we happy with this? At least he ain't going to play, is he? I'll tell you now, Everton, I was semi-white, Everton were relegated in 1951. Yeah. Yeah, and then were promoted in 1954. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So they went down in... And that's the only time they've ever... So that's the three seasons, yeah. Like I yeah, said, yeah, they've yeah. only ever yeah. spent three seasons... Outside of top flight football, it's Arsenal. Is it not Arsenal that have never been relegated from the top flight? Is it Arsenal? Is it right? Uh, Arsenal. Is it them that have never been relegated or something? Yeah, I don't know if. Um, bloody hell! I just. I think it was like nineteen fifteen. I think they got into the top flight. Right. Uh, not nineteen. Uh, nineteen thirteen. So league tables. Nineteen twelve thirteen. Arsenal, 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 Arsenal. He's going through hundreds of years worth of tables. So, uh, <laughs> no, 1913, Arsenal weren't even in the Football League. Yeah, but since they've been in the top flight, I don't think they've ever been relegated whenever they got in there. They're the league. longest. They hold the record for the longest top yeah. flight team. 1919, Freshfield, I reckon. Well, that, well, we got voted into the Football League in 1919, but we went into Division 2. Um, they must have gone straight, straight into the top flight. So, Arsenal, 1914 15, were in Division 2. 19, well, that was when league football stopped. So, second division, 19 19, 19 20, West Ham finished seventh. Trying to see where Arsenal were. Arsenal, were tenth in top flight. So, all right. That's a bit strange because of the war. Sort of skew whiffs it. You need no book. Well, so <laughs> well, anyway, G Gary John, yeah. would you play Fabianski? Would you play Fabianski or Ariola against Chelsea? Fabianski. I, I would play. I'd stick with Fabianski. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I've reverted back to Cresswell because I agree with Nigel. I don't think there's any way, even no. though I'll probably. No, would. no, 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 no. Alicia, no, no. Alicia ain't going to play. So I'm sorry, mate. You gone. Um. Corral. No chance. <laughs> He's gone. Um, but that seems... Yeah, like it, would, it, would be not, it would be nice to have Antonio, Fornells, Lanzini and Bowen rested, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah, it would. Yeah, players would. On Thursday. They're big yeah. players. Especially Antonio. Yeah. Especially then again, Antonio. But then again, Nick, Dawson is as important because of how good he's been. That's the problem. Yeah, but it? he yeah. unfortunately he can't be rested. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. no, he can't. He can't be. And... Um, like I said earlier, it's a funny feeling. We're going to see the return of... I'll tell you who I think it's going to be. I reckon it's going to be Zuma. I reckon Zuma is going to mirac have a miraculous what? recovery this week. What, have you have you read that or something, Gal? You just thought... I, 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 he's he's I, Mystic Meg. Mystic no, Meg. no, no. I, I, I've read it in a couple of places now. Wow. But it's, it's okay. really just people making assumptions based on the lack of information coming out of the club. But, um, <laughs> but it's... Yeah. Um, it has been mentioned a few times, but it's just one of those things, you know, it's very, very quiet. There is zero news on Zuma, zero news on Dio. I, I, I think we've got options, though. Like I say, I think, it, like, you got that there, what Nigel said. Yeah. You've got, you got this option where you can pull Cresswell out there. You got you can pull Rice at centre-back now. Like I yeah. say, Chell, what that gives us is you've got, you've, got a great, you've got a great assured left-back. You've got basically a ball-playing a ball playing centre back who gives us a lot more from deep. You've yeah. got four nails who can come. This ain't for Chelsea. This is for, for Frankfurt. You've got um, Suchek, who, who can play that holding role. He's, <laughs> they don't like it. He did it against Watford brilliantly. You've got yeah. Fornells and you've got Lanzini that can come in. Um, the thing is, 
the thing is, though, Nick, don't you think that he's going to be trying out his model for Frankfurt against Chelsea? I'd like to think so, but maybe not because I think he'll want to he'll want to keep Frankfurt guessing. Yeah, good. Yeah, point, maybe. Though. Yeah. Maybe. Can maybe. I clear up the Arsenal thing? Because I've realised. So it, the reason I couldn't find because they were called Woolwich Arsenal. Oh, well, I knew that you amateur. So Jeez. no, yeah, but they were listed in my my encyclopedia as Woolly J. Um, ah. So they finished twentieth in nineteen twelve thirteen, and got relegated. Mm-hmm. Obviously, thirteen fourteen they were in Division Two. Fourteen fifteen was the World War, which was the last full season. They were still in Division Two and finished six. But then in nineteen nineteen, the first year back, they've appeared in the top flight. They got elected back. They're called back Arsenal. To the top oh, brilliant! What a fix! What a fix! They changed, they so changed their they name. They didn't get actually promoted. get promoted in the top flight. They earned it after the war. Oh, bloody hell! Bought it probably. Bought it oh, after the war. But it, this this would be my this would be my lineup against uh, Frankfurt. Yeah. Oh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Ben Rama. Ben Rama? Yeah, because four now is in the middle. Oh, you've put Rice as centre back against Frankfurt. Oh, of oh, course, yeah. You've put Rice right. as centre back. Yeah, that's not a bad shout, but I just think, I truly think Rice out of that position is a. I know it's only 15 yards further forward, but. But don't who would you rather there, Suchek or Rice? Because at Rice. the end of the day, Rice. if you want. If you want to not lose, and bear in mind, this is the first leg, so you don't want to lose it. No. Yeah. So you're going to be a little bit more cautious. You could do that for the first leg and maybe reverse it for the second. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, and what this what this enables you to do if you play like this, if you if you've got that, obviously the icons ain't going to work. But you can play higher up the pitch because if you've got all this lot fucking up there, you can you can compress the place that gets rice further forward because you've got recovery pace in hmm. Fredericks and hmm. rice ain't slow. So but you rice can, and you, Suchek you, could swap. You know, you know, if, yeah. if Rice goes forward, Suchek can fall back. Yeah, but that, but that, you can play higher up the pit. So Rice would, Rice would look. Rice doesn't get forward all game. He does it three or four times in a game. The only reason mm. we all remember it is because when he does it, normally something happens. But he ain't doing it all game long. He ain't no. always bombing forward. You know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So look, it's it's an it's an option. I I don't want to see uh, Declan Rice out in midfield, but. Um, we need we we do need a strong defence. We yeah. we do, you know. <clears throat> um, and like I say, Suchek can do it as well. Suchek will be look. Rice will be pissed off because he's being asked to play um, centre back. Suchek will be pissed off because he's being asked to hold rather than be he's he's, he's box to box. But do you know what? They're team players. Yeah, so I, I, I think I think they'll do they'll they'll do what's right for the team. Personally, you don't think Kieran Kieran reckons surely Sue foul plays. I I, no. I I I think he, he will. He might, in, in I think Europe. he I think he will as well because I think he's a solid defender and I think it, I think Moyes will go defence first. I just, I just think Fredericks gives and he, more. Well, does he? Does he? Because Soufal gets forward brilliantly, crosses brilliantly, much better than Fredericks. I mean, he Fredericks has got blinding pace, but the the end product ain't really there, is it? Yeah. yeah. I'll, um, yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, like I say, it's, it's we, we've got loads of options, haven't we, at right back? We've got tons, yeah. so it's not, yeah. it's not bad. It's the one place we have got loads of options, eh? I oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. That's. Um. I think that's it. That's us done. So, um, we won't do the Premier League predictor this week because I'm fucked off with the Premier League. Um, <laughs> but we will. We will make our predictions on the Chelsea result. Nigel, go on, you go first. How many are we going to get beat by? <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. I. I mean, I do think. Um. You know they ain't gonna lose a four in a row at home, no. are they? No. Not not with us coming. And after seeing the Brentford way we played, I can see another two or three nil. I'll go. To, I'll be okay. kind two nil defeat. Yeah, Gary. Well, I'm going sadly. So um, oh yeah. I'm, so I'm gonna go one one. Yeah, can't see it, but I oh, know. Yeah. yeah, hopefully, John. Uh, I'm gonna go two nil Chelsea. Yeah, I'll go two 0 as well. I think so. I'm coming. Give me um, some hope. Give me some hope. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I'll give you hope. Do you know what? I was there tonight under Alan Scumbag, yes. and um, <laughs> when we parked the fucking bus. Oh, brilliant! And I must admit, when we walked out, I did say to my mate, "How fucking embarrassing are we celebrating a nil-nil like that?" 
Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, it did feel like a win, though. I did celebrate. <laughs> I, I went to the last time I went there was the David Martin game a few years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, yeah. and that's the thing. This, it, and worse, worse West Ham teams. Yeah. Has beaten better Chelsea teams. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, you know, and and this is the thing. I think Moyes will look at it. He wants to do well in the league and the cup. Yeah, and this is the strange thing about him. I find is with the substitutions and whatever. Hmm. You know, you look back to um, the uh, the game just gone, the Burnley game. You know, he only made. He still had a sub. He was trying to bring um, Seal off. off. He was trying to bring soup out on. Yeah. yeah. But then you think, mate, you've left it till the 94th minute to make your third sub after teams yeah. have done three subs by the 80th minute. That's the, it. I know. I know. The big, True the, enough. The, the, the biggest problem with that substitution was it should have been done when Diop first got injured and the medical team went over yeah. and saw what was wrong. Yeah, that's another story. What, what is it? I know, I know, but I'll tell you what, before we go there, I mean, I mean what is going on with that, Nigel? I mean, we saw it with Ogbonna. We saw it with Zuma. We saw it with Cresswell. Now we're seeing it with Diop. Who the fuck is making these, especially because we've been stung a few times this year. I mean, who's making them making them decisions? Because it ain't Moyes. Moyes ain't a doctor. He, he don't say this player's all right to play on. We've got someone who's going on there saying, yeah, 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 it'll be all right. Just, just get him to run it off. Yeah, I don't mm. know if it's the, um, the... It should be down to the medical team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what, it, and be, that's yeah. what you would be. like to expect that the medical team go. No, you need to come off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But generally, you always have a look to see if he can run it off. It was a bit innocuous, but the thing is, he was for a while holding it, limping. You could see he was visibly limping, yeah. and it yeah. happened yeah. about five minutes before the ninety was up. So he played about ten minutes. Where, where he wasn't sure exactly. where he should be playing. And the thing is, a player will always want to play, and, and good managers make the decision for the player. I don't care what you think, boy. I want you off. Yeah, yeah, You know, and I, that's where, that's the only t- t- criticism probably I've got of Moyes is I don't fathom out his substitution. And that's no. why I look at it. When, and it does go back to January, and I know we shouldn't really always keep going back. And this is where I get a bit. No, what it is is that I, I understand when he he, he, got, he turns around and says, "Oh, I couldn't find anyone good enough to replace the first teamers." Yeah, I, and I get that. So for three weeks you look for players, but then in in the in the last week you look at the people on your bench and you think, "Can I strengthen my bench?" Yeah, well, yeah, you could. Yeah, and that's the only well, it's not so that and the substitute, and it does tie in with the substitutions because it's almost like he looks at the bench and think, I've got no one there I really want to bring on. Yeah, I know. And then that, then that makes me think, well, back in January, why did you say, or back in February, why did you say that then? In the in the in the same breath, Nige, we've had extreme poor luck with centre backs, oh, right? No, right? is and, it? But yeah, but yeah, but is it extreme poor luck when all yeah, you're doing is, is you're no, 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 John. Now, what I'm saying is, John, you're playing the same eleven players every two or three days, every two or three days. No, but Diop ain't hardly get, played, and he no, no, I know, but to, but to get injuries is not. It ain't. It, it's gonna not happen. Unusual, yeah. no. It's not unusual. They are played every few fucking days, and they have been. For the well, whole second lose, part of this season. To lose three of your four first-team centre-backs with it's long-term up, but injuries. No, do, you know, do you know something? I'm going to go one step further. With the way that we've used our team, I don't think anyone else uses their team like us. I think we've been lucky. I, I think we've been lucky. Yeah, I think argument. we've been lucky. We yeah, haven't had more. Argument. Imagine we've if we'd lost Antonio. Antonio. Sure. Yeah, we've been lucky. I don't think we've been yeah. unlucky. Yeah, You're going to get injuries. Yeah, maybe. So, that's, that's my opinion anyway. I, 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 and, and, and It will happen. If you're playing them every two or three days, you know, and it's like Zuma, you know, where he got that tackle and he went over. I know it was that it was an impact injury. It was. But you know what? If you're feeling fatigued, if you're not if you're not fully strong, you're gonna you're gonna get hurt. Um well, it's, yeah, it's, but it's well, didn't he that. look like he was fully fatigued? Yeah, because he didn't to me, because he was having the games of it, his life. He was but, surging forward at the time, so yeah, he was surging yeah. forward. So he it. did not look fatigued, yeah. No. No, no, yeah. no, no. But anyway, we're right, going to carry over to you. Over to me. Over to me. Look, uh, end of a long... Any more comments, John, before we wrap up? Nah, they're all talking rubbish about January. Ah, Sodom. Fair enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> end of a long show. Longest for a while, actually. Where are we, What are we up to? Two, Two hours, 30. 34. Bloody 34, yeah. Fuck, yeah. Amazing. Oh, mate. What's that? Long? 
mate. Oh, like, fucking on Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> thanks all for joining us. Um, thank you for all your comments. It's been brilliant. Nigel, thanks, thanks for thanks Cheers, for joining us. And um, thanks to David. Um, yeah. Good, good great guest as usual. Good to have the pair of you on here. Get over to sixfoot2.co.uk and subscribe. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. It's Claret and Booze. Hit the bell notification icon and give us a like. Uh, we'll be back probably on Sunday after the win at Chelsea. Back on Sunday for the hangover. If we can pull ourselves together to actually do a, um, a, a we'll do, a we'll do one. We'll, no, we'll, we'll do we'll do one this week because I'm I'm expecting a loss, so I won't care to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course you won't. Of course you won't. No, <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine, right. won't you? Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah. So no, it, we, listen, Nigel, it's been down to me that we haven't done the last few shows because I haven't I wanted, I haven't wanted <laughs> no, no, but I, no, because I haven't wanted to criticize the team. Yeah, it's true. He did. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. Yeah, but be you negative. can still do a show and not criticize. No, the you team. can't. Because you, you got. If you're gonna. Ju- if you're gonna judge a game, you have got to judge it on its merit. If they've been shit, they've been shit. You've got. To, you've got to call it like it is. And they were shit in both of them games. <laughs> Nick, you're telling it like it is. <laughs> Tell it like it is proper. Tell it real. Proper. I'm proper. He's proper, man. He's proper. You can't come on and say they've been brilliant <laughs> when they've been shit. Nigel will pull it. Nigel gets one of his books out. Well, we have scored a <laughs> little game. Anyway, yeah. enough, enough of this negativity. Before we go, oh, yeah. I'm going to revise my score prediction for Sunday. We're going to beat Chelsea 2-1. Oof. That's the end. So anyway, I've got to have some optimism before I go. Thank yeah. you for all your time. We're done here. See you on Sunday, hopefully. And come on, you irons. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, sir. Cheers. Go on, you irons.